I'm wearing a turtleneck, guys. Hey, whoa, that's a nice turtleneck. Episode 189 that I break out the T-neck. Yep. T-Rex. What do you call it? What do you call it when you do a fantasy football draft and turtleneck? A mock draft. <laughs> We call what do you call an animal from back in the day who uh, his neck is called what Tyrannosaurus neck. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it when what do you call it when like a an animal that moves really slow has a neck turtleneck. <laughs> uh, uh oh ooh I ooh I think this tight beat means that it's going down with some random thoughts and white meat too Midwest best friends eating fast food on repeat so come along let's have some fun and go ahead get on your feet because it's the Ghost Runners podcast. Who needs Scott, you know? Oh, uh, that is funny. Rachel will do that sometimes if she's ever, um, like, I say you're ready to double fist, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> it's my started, new good luck charm. I started that sentence and Brad gets his hand, one hand on a LaCroix and one hand on another I mean, trick. ever since Jake's been, you know, with a lady and we are filming in her house and she's here, she always brings me two drinks and I always say thank you. This house is full of healthy drinks. Yes. I love it. I love it too. Um, we've always said if we're going to do a podcast here, it needs to be full of healthy drinks, healthy drinks, no added sugar, please, mm -hmm. please. Uh, oh yeah. Something Rachel will do though. Like if she's ever like going to like be really sarcastic about something and is maybe nervous that I'm not going to get it right away. Mm -hmm. She can't even let it like sit for a second. She'll be like, <laughs> yeah, I figure that's what you say. Just kidding. <laughs> just like the second she says the sarcastic <laughs> thing, it's just like, she just can't help it. She's like, I just, I don't want to even for a second. You think I was serious. She does not like the feeling of like, yeah, you, you thinking she's a jerk or something. Totally. I get it. I get that with a, a lot of things. So I did that back, back in the day. I like, I was so sarcastic to my friends that when I was serious and like friendly to people, they wouldn't always understand that I was being friendly. Like there were certain kids like growing up that got made fun of a lot and I tried to be nice to them. And there were some times uh, where the guy was like, why are you, why are you messing with me? And I'm like, I'm not messing with you, man. I'm, dang it. I'm just wanting to know how your day is going, you know, whatever. So, Hey, I get it, Rachel. If you're listening. Thank you. She says, <laughs> Um, Rachel's procrastinating on a, ta uh, on a table. That's me. Uh, <laughs> Rachel's procrastinating on a paper out in the common area. Common area. Yeah, in the mess hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rachel had two 10-page papers to write this week. Um, I don't know if she had to write them this week or if it's one of those things where it's like, hey, Des Moines this weekend, I want to get yeah. it out of the way. Yeah. She's good at doing that. I had an idea this week to um, potentially help out Rachel. Not even help her out because I knew it wouldn't end up working this way but have you ever been hearing those things about artificial intelligence like writing yes kids cgt papers and... gti whatever the guy's name is mm -hmm. what yeah. is it what's the what are the three letters uh spf actually no that's the guy from like the ftx uh crash oh see i don't know anything about that there's a lot of acronyms being thrown around can you days. can you inform me about that after you tell me about well no inform me about that now i know very little because i don't really follow this stuff it's you like know i SBF? bought bf i knew his initials sam bankman fried oh okay man. okay something like that yeah um I bought crypto just to kind of be part of something. I remember I didn't really that back know. in the day you had Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and yeah, actually, fun fact, all my Bitcoin is frozen right now because um, I put it in this uh, company <laughs> that would like invest it for you. And so it would grow over time. It's like, oh, genius. Why would I not do this? And then <laughs> they're a little shaky right now. I can't even get it's it's I mean, yeah, it's too just, good to be true. <laughs> that's guaranteed. <laughs> actually, I haven't even checked in a couple of weeks since all has happened. Let's see what old BlockFi is up to. Uh, anyway. Wait, BlockFi is the... It's the name of the company that I put all my Bitcoin in oh, okay. to invest it for me. So you don't know what happened with FTX? FTX was like a crypto... It's like, a, is it a type of cryptocurrency? No, it was like a crypto like... Um, Trading company? Yeah, something like that. Um, <laughs> this is one of, the, one of those times where people are going to be listening and being like, oh, they're, they're not even close. Yeah, we're not that close. Basically, this like 30-year-old was in charge of it and had like all this money had gotten funding from like Steph Curry, Tom Brady, all these rich people. And uh, yeah. Short story was just not doing things the right way. Crypto, you know, with a lot of things, is only worth as much as people were willing to pay for it. And so, yeah, once things start crumbling, then it's just worth nothing. And so it's like completely gone now. Yeah, they filed for bankruptcy. Dang. Anyway, okay. Um, yeah, Rachel. I think the acronym you're looking for is maybe like MGT, MGT three. Yes, thank I think you. So um, is the AI thing that like you can like prompt it with anything. Like my cousin the other day did like give me a what's the type of poem like. That's like, oh, a haiku or something like, okay. give me a haiku about Patrick Mahomes. And it brought back, it did that. Ooh. Like, it was like amazing the different prompts that he would give this thing. And it would like, you know, crank it out. We should do some. Uh, 
Yeah. So I, I had heard about this and so I was like, this is, I asked Rachel, I was like, what are your papers on this week? She told me. And so I put it in there just to see what it would do. Oh, it's genius. Because I think a lot of like high school, college kids are doing this. That's what my, my cousin was like. This is going to take away like all online homework forever. Like it's like. He's absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, why would you ever do anything again? Just look it up. Okay. So like what was the prompt or what did you tell me more? It was hard to get the right series of words where it would actually write like a paper for me. But I found this one uh, AI where you could choose the tone. And so I would choose the tone as formal. Okay. And then it was like the differences comparing and contrasting different types of like addiction therapy or something like that. And um, anyway, that didn't quite work. So then I had to give it two different types of therapy. So but I was like, like, but like not quite working. Did it, it spouted off something. It just was like incoherent. It, it, yeah. Or like not incoherent. It's always very impressive and very coherent. Like it's cool. It like types it in real time. It's not like, Hey, we'll send you an email when it's done. It's just like typing it for you. You're like seeing words show up on a page. And it's like, this is awesome. Okay. Like, hands free. But, but it's not like instant. It's not instant. It takes okay. a little time to think. Okay. And so when I say not working, it would tell me like, it would almost give me the definition of what comparing means. And then it would give me the definition of what contrasting means. Okay. And then it would say like, why you use treatments, but it wasn't like writing a paper. It, it was like, it was like if you were trying to write a 10 page paper, but you only had eight pages and you were like trying to like embellish things. Like, I don't think you guys are getting it. Comparing yeah. <laughs> is different than contrasting. So, so what I mean by comparing is, and then just defining it on there. Uh -huh. Let's actually compare. Looking words. at two different things. And seeing what the differences are in those. For example, red and blue. You yeah. compare and contrast those. <laughs> yeah. Let me go on. Uh, red and blue are colors. Colors <laughs> are part of a spectrum. <laughs> that was uh, basically what I was doing. Yeah. But eventually, so I plugged in actual. So I said, compare um, the similarities between Alcoholics Anonymous and like Narcotics Anonymous or something like that. Okay. And then when I gave it specifics, then it just went to town. Okay. And so Rachel and I were both working individually at a coffee shop and um, I was doing all this and then I just like sent her an email and I was like, hey, uh, I sent you an email. You check it out. And it was so fun to watch her reaction. I wish I would have filmed it because she was just like, what is this? What did, did you, what, yeah. what did what, you do? How are you doing this? What thing? did you do? You are so busy, right? What did you do? You yeah. do not have time to be, how, what is going on? <laughs> uh, it was so fun. And then I couldn't, you know, hold out for very much longer. I was like, I used an uh, AI. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, what's an AI? Did she even know what that was? Um, yeah, yeah. She's familiar. Okay. And I was like, is any of this helpful? And she's like, uh... So what I'm actually writing a paper on, and I was like, <laughs> okay, well, yeah, this yeah. is not really that helpful. That was a fun idea, though. Yeah. Um, and so what I did was I did give it a prompt. I was like, maybe I'll give it something for the podcast. Mm -hmm. And so this oh, is heck yeah. this is what it said. I, I said, I want a funny story about the new dog. Ooh. Because Isaac got a new dog. Yeah. Which we could talk about that. Okay, go ahead. Um, give me the story about the new dog. Or tell me about, I, I saw that Isaac posted something and I was like, oh, I guess he's dog sitting for somebody. And then it was like, no, I think that's their dog. It's our dog. Yeah. Isaac texts me. He's like, hey, got an opportunity. I think he was texting me like as, as landlord. Like, hey, is it cool if we get a dog? Yeah, I would definitely. But he was to. like, it's six month old golden retriever already house trained. I was like, this is a dream come true. Wow. I get a golden retriever and I don't have to be in charge of it. <laughs> this is amazing. That's why I'm excited for you guys to get a dog too. <laughs> yeah. I want to keep being uncles to dogs. Oh, and I would love for you to be the uncle to my dog. I would. Every time it. we're out of town. Hey. Jake, can you go watch our dog or can if you can bring the dog sleep over? in bed with me, then yes, absolutely. I would love that. Um, yeah. What if, so, what if that was like, they knew like that was the privilege only like we don't let him sleep in our bed. But when you're grandpa's house, <laughs> <right? Yeah. laughs> you get all the treats you want. You sleep in the bed, you get sugar cookies. Yeah, he comes back. You're like, you formed all the wrong habits. Hey, over at hey, grandpa's hey house. kennel him when we're gone. That's what we always say whenever, you know, our kids come back from the grandparents like, ah, oh, they just ride the grandparents too long. They're misbehaving. They're spoiled. We're going to do our dog too. Uh, I gave Isaac some options for dog names. Let me know. Do you know what the dog's name is? I might know what a multiple choice, but I don't remember. What if the multiple choice is pretty lengthy? Here are the options I gave Isaac. I was like, okay. not that he need to pick from it, but I was like, here's some dog names. Did you really like write down a bunch of notes for him? Yeah. Yeah. He said something. He's like, oh yeah. He said the dog doesn't have a name yet. So if you have any good ideas, let me know. Can I know the background of how he got this dog? I'm not real sure. I didn't ask many questions. I was like, yeah, sweet, you, a you dog. Don't. At that point, he was like, hey, the dog's <laughs> Actually, here. It is kind of weird. I should ask more questions because the dog. I'm, I'm always interested in the origin story. Like, that's my favorite part of anything. The dog. So on one end, we are told it doesn't have a name. So it's like, oh, okay, no yeah. problem. But it's six months old but and it's house six trained. Old, but house trained. But we are also told it lived all of its life outdoors. No. So it's like, some it's of like, this so it's just a true. perfect, like it's a golden retriever. The golden retriever is just good dogs, apparently. It, none of this, it can't all be true. It There's no way it's always outdoors and yet it knows. 
And it's house trained. Yeah. How'd you house train it without a name? That's like some guy grown up. Yeah. George of the jungle all of a sudden is like the, the best businessman on wall street. Like, no, <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> one or the other. Yeah. So some of this is not quite adding up and, and you have to train them by calling their name or something. That's what right? I'm saying. How do you train a dog without a name? Right. Um, and so he was a little, a little like, uh, maybe anxious. I don't know how to diagnose a dog exactly, but the first few days we had him, just very like almost sedated. Just like so relaxed, didn't really wag his tail, didn't want to eat, drink. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. Anxious. That's more like, yeah, just like chill. But like, yeah, sad. maybe just like not used to being around people or maybe not used to being around the indoors. doesn't matter. He's good now. Outdoors, he's, you know, they're just they're just by themselves. Maybe they see a deer every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, he's an introverted <laughs> dog. But uh, anyway, here are the dog names I gave Isaac. OK, Chip mm -hmm. with an accent. <laughs> yeah, kind of a two syllable Chip. 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 Hey, Chip. Chip. Tiger, chipper. I love when when people name their dog other names for animals. Bear, bear is a classic. Moose. Yep, I've slept with both those dogs. <laughs> yeah, both big old big old boys. So chip, tiger, chipper, camp with a K. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> classic. Rider with a Y. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out my friend Rider. Uh, Blue. Just okay. a good dog name. Yeah, Blue. Blue is a hunting dog. Yeah, Ozzy. Kind of fun. Oh. Um, banjo. Uh, I meant to write Benji, but Banjo came out. So I left Banjo. I like Banjo. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like Banjo. I've never heard Banjo. I think it's a great dog name. Okay. So if you live out on the farm. Yeah, Banjo. Banjo. Pepper. Yeah, classic. Cash. But, but he's a golden. So he should probably be pepper colored. Yeah, I think pepper, when I think of it, is like a gray <laughs> or a black dog. Probably. Right? He's breaking the mold. Um, cash. Yeah. Uh, jet, in parentheses, for McColl. <laughs> I, I liked it until you said for McCall. Okay. Uh, Chiefs wide receiver for anybody that doesn't know. Skip or skip. Yeah, it's another two syllable skip. And dash. Dash. He chose, I remember, cash. Is that, is that right? Oh, incorrect. No? You thought it was cash? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me go back again. Um, it's confusing because the same time we got this dog was the same day a new roommate moved in whose name is Cooper, which is my parents' dog's name. So I've called the dog Cooper a couple of times, <laughs> which I know Cooper. It's Cooper McCall. Yeah, I was going to say, you like, yeah, I've known Cooper Cooper forever. was in my small group, right. but I keep wanting to call the dog Cooper now. They both moved in the same day. Not okay. the Cooper McCall married to Gabby Odom, the Cooper McCall from Kansas City. Confusing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Kinsu Cooper. Okay. Chip? I feel like it starts with a C. Not Chip. Does it start with a C? Um, it does not start with a C. Not even a little? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Opposite part of the alphabet. Uh, it starts with an S. <laughs> no? It, close to S. Opposite start of the alphabet? That's got to be close to T. Now we're talking. T? Yeah. Oh, I don't even remember what name you said that had a T in it. T T up? T up. <laughs> Tanjo? Uh, tiger. He went with Tiger. Went with Tiger. See, I don't know. I don't know about that. See, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he's a tiger. He, does, does he seem like a tiger? This this dog? Sure. Doing all right as a tiger? I think so. He seems to already learn his name. I have learned his I, name. I don't. Because then, then you got you. I'm a big abbreviator. You gonna go tig? Tie? Uh, I don't know if I abbreviate dogs that much. Dog's really? name is tiger. Tiger. I think you got to be consistent with what you call it, so that way it knows its name and knows you're talking to it. In the way you like, you know inflect your voice gotta be consistent yeah it's true because yeah, the dog doesn't actually know letters it just knows like tones my dad just like growing up like with people just in general if you have a one syllable name he'll make it two if you have a two syllable name he'll make it one so it's like you know john big john yeah hey johnny skinny J. yeah so like you know all our all his great you know hattie is hat Bo is eh, maybe he just still says oh, we say bowie you know rosie's rose like LC else. Mm. Not that hard to figure out. <laughs> Cole is Coley. You know, like Coley. So Jake would be Jakey. Jacob. 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 Um, Shark guy. So Tiger Tiger would be, hey, come here, Tig. Tig. Yeah, anyway. Uh, they, they, like my sister has a dog named Atlas. And they call it, I think my dad might call it At. <laughs> I might be wrong about that. <laughs> but um, anyway. Uh, so a couple updates. Block Fi, uh, hit withdraw. Withdrawals are currently paused. Bummer. All my money's in there. How, how is that fair? It's your money. You can't, you just can't take it out? Guess not. <laughs> You're just fine with it. I mean, it's, uh, like, that's yeah. the thing with crypto. Everyone's, it's unregulated. It's decentralized. So it's just like, yeah, I mean, there's no one that's going to make a bank pay you. Interesting. That's why banks and cash is so valuable. Yeah. Because if the bank <laughs> says they owe you this, the government will literally bail the bank out. Right. To FDIC. make sure they pay you. 
What's that saying? What's that mean? I think it means like, yeah, it's federally backed. I don't, oh, I don't cool. know. I don't know what the abbreviation is. We should for. start putting that. Ghost Runners Podcast, FDIC. Member FDIC. Member FDIC. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, the new dog. The funny story about the new dog. Funny story. Written by the AI. I wish you would have had a real funny story and a fake funny story. And then we could have compared. <laughs> I thought about doing something like that, but it's pretty obvious. Like, it's just like, it's okay. written like a essay kind of. Okay. And yeah, this is. Keep in mind, this all I said was a funny story about a dog, and it just went down. It's very impressive. Okay. Jake was working on his Peter one day when he heard the sound of a dog whimpering outside of his door. Her, her. As he walked to the... Yeah, you do the color okay, commentary. Okay. Her, her, As he walked to the door, her, her. he saw a small brown dog with no collar. Jake thought it was just some stray dog. He didn't pay much attention to it. Get out! <laughs> a few days later, Jake heard the same whimpering outside his door again. Her, 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 this time, he opened her. the door. <laughs> there, there stood a little girl holding her hand out for him to take the, her dog. Excuse me, Mister. Please take my dog. <laughs> but I actually just held one hand out. So, me dog is in one hand. Excuse me, Mister. <laughs> and then just open hand in the other. Please, please take my dog. Please take my dog. Jake took the little girl back inside. All right. <laughs> I, I, then you're I, in your room at this point? I or? don't know. I forgot about this. Come part. on in my room, little girl. Hey, Jake took the little girl. I have to say little girl. <laughs> Jake took the little girl back inside and asked if she needed anything from him or his mother. So I guess I live oh, with my mom yeah. in the story. Or his mother before taking her home. The little girl said that she had lost her pet and wanted to know where she could find another one like hers in the neighborhood. Huh? Jake told her that he didn't know of any other dogs like hers, but he would keep an eye out for one and let her know if he found one. That's a nice, pretty yeah. unique dog. Yeah. The little girl thanked him. We never know her name, I guess. The little, little girl thanked him and left the house with her dog in tow. The next day, Jake was sitting at his computer with the little girl when the little girl came running into his room, <laughs> screaming for help. <laughs> didn't even knock this time. <laughs> Just ran into my room. She said that she had been walking home from school when she saw a man trying to drag her dog away by its collar as it Whoa. struggled against him. Whoa! Drag by the collar? Yeah. Whoa. The little hey! <laughs> the little girl asked Jake what she should do, and he suggested that she call the police so they could get involved before things got worse between them than they already were. I love that you just suggest it. Like, hey, it's your call, but if it were me... I can't make you call This the guy that was literally forcing the, the dog away, I suggest you call the police. Yeah, it's good. Get good. Okay. <laughs> Jake then went back to working on his computer while waiting for the police to arrive at his doorstep. A few minutes later, there was a knock on his door. And when he opened it, there stood two officers with their guns drawn, ready to arrest him for animal cruelty because of how much he spent playing video games all day long <laughs> instead of taking care of himself or looking after his mother. <laughs> Yeah, you get arrested for that. That's a federal crime. <laughs> Member FDIC. Jake was surprised that the police were there. What? And told them that he had nothing to do with what happened to that little girl's dog. I had nothing to do with that little girl's dog. But they didn't believe him. I don't believe you. And arrested him anyway. I'm arrest you anyway. <laughs> Jake was taken away in handcuffs while I just realized... I don't think I put my name in here. Or I must have made an account. Like, all I said is a funny story about a dog. Yeah. I just used my name. Okay. Jake I was wondering was, about that, too. Jake was taken away in handcuffs while his mother screamed at the top of her lungs for help from anyone who would listen. Help! Anyone who was listening! <laughs> the next day, a newspaper article appeared in which it stated that a young boy named Jake had been arrested for animal cruelty after being accused by an eight-year-old girl of not taking care of her pet dog properly. <laughs> so the girl framed you. I guess so. The article went on to say how much trouble this poor kid was going through because he spent all of his time playing video games <laughs> instead of doing any real work around the house or looking after himself like a normal person should have done. No. <laughs> what an article. This is slander. <laughs> the article ended with saying how sad it made everyone feel to, to see such a bright young boy go down so low as becoming an animal abuser. Just because he couldn't take care of himself or look after another people's pets properly. Wow. The end? Yeah. That's, I, I like the idea of like this thing, this amazing technology, like having this crusade, having this mission of like, you know what, we're going to use this amazing technology to embarrass and make fun and shame anybody who's too addicted to technology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're like, going to take a, a stance here. You know, like, cause I bet a lot of these people that are playing with this thing also love video games. And so they're yeah. like, wait a second. I read this story that this AI bot made for me. Man, I think I'm going to stop playing video games cause I might get arrested for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
very wild. And that's that's supposed to be a funny story. It's supposed to be a funny story. I think. Do you think if you put the tell me a funny story about a dog again, it would crank out the same thing? Oh, that's a good thought. Or a different thing? I don't know. I just typed in haiku about Brad, mm-hmm. and it, th- this is what I'm talking about when it doesn't. Go. The haiku is about Brad. <laughs> it's a poem that celebrates his life, and it was written by me. The book includes the original version of the poem, as well as my reworking of it in its prose form. Um, and it just goes on. So <laughs> that didn't quite work. Yeah, interesting. I don't know what my cousin was. Maybe I don't know what he did. I mean, there's all sorts of these companies offering this. So this one may be more like essay based. Yeah, that's really fun, though. Either way, kind of fun. Try it out. Maybe someone, you know, what would be fun is a bunch of people writing in the Facebook group this week. Yeah. About the podcast. And we have to try and figure out if this is AI or just (laughs) someone just like giving their actual thoughts on the podcast this week. That would be fun. The the Facebook group's always fun. So anything you guys put in there would be awesome. Please do. It is always fun. (sighs) Anyway, how was your week? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Like I should. Uh, I'm feeling really excited about the vacation going in April. Yeah. You know, today was the first day of it Mm -hmm. and we got some great sales. I was, I had, we had no idea what to expect. Um, yeah, it was hard to kind of tell. Like, you guys are so loyal and so fun and seem to cling to anything Brad and I offer. But usually, it's like a $60 hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, there's been proof of concept of like, no, the ghosties represent and support us so well. But it's like, well, yeah, it's, it's a little bit easier to support somebody with $30 than with, you know, a vacation. So, and there were so many comments. I feel like when we started posting about it, I mean, 80, 90% of the comments are like, gosh, wish I could. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm seeing a lot of wish I could. not seeing a lot of can't wait till 9 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, Brad and I truly, I, we didn't have many expectations, which is nice. And um, yeah, so at like 8.59 this morning, I went into the back end of the website and went into in- inventory and switched it from zero to like four for this room, two for this room, one for this room, whatever. And then I kind of make sure it's all set. Probably two minutes later. I'm like, let me just open a new tab and actually go to ghostfunders.life and just make sure everything looks good, whatever. I do it. And it says that like two of the rooms are sold out. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm what like, have I done? I'm screwing this up. How yeah. did I do that? Whatever. And then go look. I'm like, no, like six people have already bought rooms yeah. at 902. Awesome. It was crazy. And so awesome. I will say it's far from sold out though. What do we have? Probably 10 to 15 more beds left, spots left. I think it's 12. 12 spots left. Yeah. So f- yes, as far as I can tell um, without looking at it yeah. exactly right now. 10 to 15. 10 to 15 you is accurate. Say. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. Yeah. Get a friend um, and yeah, sign up. Yeah. We have all, all the single ones are filled up, but if you want to get it with a friend, some people were, you know, we had the idea of like, maybe we could just like join people together and have them bunk together. And then I was like, that's super weird. Can you imagine just like meeting a person out of yeah. nowhere? All right. Braden and Connor, you guys are bunking up. <laughs> yeah. You guys are sleeping right next to each other. And Connor says, he has something called a nervous tick whenever he sleeps. Uh, um, yeah. And Brayden is what you'd call, well, he describes it as thrashing. So it's, <laughs> and he said it's not related to his sleep apnea. They said it's not technically athlete's foot, but <laughs> you know, yeah, all these different things. So, but a lot of ghosties are out there being adventurous and like wanting to do that anyway. So like, I'm like, Hey, I'll be, I'm all for it. Go ahead and just figure out yourself. I don't want to be responsible if this, yeah. you know, whatever. you guys can chat, figure uh, out who you want to sleep with on the trip. But yeah, there are spots available for guys and girls. If you want to save a little money and split a queen size bed with someone, yeah, it's going to be so fun. I'm so pumped about it. So, uh, thanks for all those who've signed up so far. Yeah. Thank Holler you. Holler at us with any questions you have. Um, but yeah, I'm doing good. Everyone's doing good. I were, we, you are leaving for Des Moines tomorrow. Yes. And what are you doing? I am working on woodworking things. <laughs> That's right. Anyone um, who's come to Des Moines probably knows this by yeah, now. Yeah. So kind of a bummer decision I had to make. I, it was tough. It was I was trying to figure it out and basically just decided I was not going to go to Des Moines. I, I did not foresee whenever I was asked by Trey to uh, do these Des Moines shows that I was going to buy a YouTube channel. And so all mm-hmm. of a sudden, not only was I having the you know craziness of woodworking that's usually in December, but then also all this craziness and stuff. And so it's just like, I don't know if this is going to be worth it. And you know then I thought Trey and I had talked about one number that I was going to get paid and then it was a different number. And I was like, Oh, that's like four days away from my family and from my work. And so it just wasn't, I, I, it was, it was a tough decision, but I was like, I just don't know if I can sacrifice that much time for something that I really don't think, even if, even if I killed it at stand up this weekend, I don't think I'd be like, well, now I'm going to also do stand up comedy. Cause it's like, I don't think I have the capacity. To yeah. Do there's not comedy. much of a, like a foreseeable path. Yeah. If like, yeah. Best case scenario, you probably don't perform much stand up. 
yeah. anyway. Like not right now, at least. Yeah. Like I, I do think it'd be so fun and I have a desire for it to an extent, but I'm like, I still have to do all these other things. Mm -hmm. And actually it's so funny. The day I was trying to figure out if I should do it or not, I delivered a table to Jim Dodd, who we talked about Lauren Dodd last week on the mm -hmm. pod, really gullible Lauren Dodd. And out of nowhere, I wasn't even talking to Jim about this. Jim randomly, he's an older, you know, in his sixties, older, not old, just an older guy. People do not like that. Um, and he, you know, out of nowhere, you know, just kind of it's like, you know, somebody gave me the advice one time that you can't get an A in everything. And I, at first I kind of pushed back on that. I think just cause my personality like, is like, what's a 4.0 4. Uh, then? Yeah. When you have weighted grades, you can, uh, <laughs> no, but he was basically just saying like, you can try really hard to stretch yourself thin and do all these things, but yeah, eventually you can't do it all. Well, you can do it all to an extent, but it's like, you can't do it all. When I'm like, man, that hits home. And so I'm like, even if I kill it, you know, stand up, am I really going to try to add one more thing that I'm going to try to do well on my list? So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, and I was stressed. I, I was, I've been stressed for a couple of weeks now about all the different things. So I was like, I, I told Trey no, and it like alleviated a bunch of stress. So um, have fun, Jake. Uh, but I will not be there. I'll, I'll be missing you. Um, it's okay. So all the ghosts out there. I really like, that was honestly the, the biggest thing for me. The hardest thing about it was like feeling like I'm going to let ghosties specifically down. I was like, man, I feel bad about that aspect of it. So anyway, there that, uh, missed me just know I missed you too. But, um, yeah, overall that is not where I'll be. I'll be with my family this weekend doing lots of family Christmassy things and I'm excited about it. Good deal. So yeah, this weekend or when we were at Thanksgiving, Catherine was like, I want to talk about all the Christmas things that we should do this year. Um, she's like, I'm just, don't stress me out with what you want to add to this list, but I'll, I just have a list of things. And she li listed off like 11 things. And I was like, that's, that's enough right there. Yeah. I, I don't need to add any more things that I don't even know if I want to be able to do all those things. So, um, anyway, I'm really excited about the the phrase. You can't get an A at everything though. And like just worrying about getting the A at the things that I want to get an A on and prioritize. So, and I would say at the moment we're not getting an A in jean shorts. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah. We, the last two days we've posted videos that have not done great. <laughs> it's hard not to get bummed out by it because YouTube gives you so much like great feedback, but it's not always positive. It's just like, Hey, this is one of the worst videos you've ever posted. It's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> just FYI. Like, I mean, it tanked. Like, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, we, we of course are, you know, trying to theorize it and trying to uh, react X, Y, Z way. And yeah, it's almost like one of those things where I just have to compartmentalize and be like, just don't think about it right now. But yeah, it's hard because it's just like so much of what we are thinking about now. Yeah, so, I was telling Rachel that earlier. I was just, she's like, everything okay? I was like, she's like, are you stressed? I was like, no, I don't think I'm stressed. I just feel like bothered. And I tried to like come up with different reasons why I felt bothered. But I think I took some time to myself and I was like, I think what it is is just the video's performance. I don't think I would be bothered by a lot of these other things if the videos were just performing well. And I, I need to not get so bogged down by that. It's not healthy. I can't I, let I that agree. affect me. I, I feel like, because yesterday we filmed... Uh, we filmed a little short and then we went to Chick-fil-A and filmed the video mm -hmm. and I thought that day was awesome. It was a fun day. And what video did we post that post yesterday? Nothing. Nothing. AKA we weren't looking at the performance yeah. of it. AKA we weren't worried about like, you know, we weren't, we, we already left, you know, the, the one that we did the day before we didn't worry about anymore. All right, move on. Yeah. And so it's like, it's almost like, I don't know. I, we have to worry about it to an extent, but it's like, maybe we should discipline ourselves not to look at it until we're done <laughs> doing the filming or I something know. like that it's hard when we're so like motivated and gung-ho this is our channel now let's make yes. it as good as possible and we feel we feel great about the videos like yeah. it's not like we're like oh this video is okay like yeah it's like and we're like let's try something different we're doing these things if, if, I mean, if you're watching you've seen them but like we're doing it we're, we're doing we're, things that have worked in the past doing yeah doing subjects that worked in the past do, adding a little more like you know banter i don't know what mm -hmm. the right word is for it just a little bit of whatever off after the line is done or something like that, adding those things, kind of being more fun with it, trying to be more Jake and Brad and whatever. And it's just like, okay, well, like literally today it was like, I mean, we can't do as bad as we did yesterday. <laughs> and then we did worse. And so it's like, whoa, what do we do here? So it's one of those things. What'd you say that you heard from Mark room, Mark Rover, Mark Rober about super Mario. Yeah. Yeah, when you play Super Mario, which Rachel and I did this past weekend, uh -huh. it was fun. Um, like you, you can choose to be bummed that you didn't know there was like a, a pit there 
mm -hmm. you jumped into it. You didn't know, yeah. you know, whatever. There was an invisible block there. Oh, yeah. shoot, now I'm dead. But guess what? You get to start that level over with. Right. And, you know, basically just saying, how how do you want to reframe this? Yeah. And just like, hey, I'm going to learn from it. I'm not jumping in that pit anymore. I'm going to be running start. I'm going right. to hold jump and I'm going to figure it out next right. time. And that's, I think it's fun doing it with somebody else because A, we, you know, if one of us is bummed, we can be like, hey, no, come on, we got this. Like, and vice versa. But it's also like, yeah, well, I don't know what we did wrong. That's, that's the hard thing. It's yeah. like, it's like we did the same. I mean, maybe, maybe we did something wrong because we did the same thing again. You know, like we have a proven concept. We tried, we did woke parent and we did conservative dad. And both those have done really well in the past. And all like, of a let's put a Christmas spin on it. Yeah. It makes sense. We even did conservative dad at Christmas last year, which maybe like I'm saying, we shouldn't have done the same yeah. video. But like it did great. Like, and then all of a sudden it's like, this might be the worst Gene Schwartz video ever. Yeah. So fun. Probably is going to be. <laughs> it's weird, dude. It's it's a weird industry just because in the end, we are not in control. We just have to, we have to put, we hit upload and then we just hope that YouTube shows it to people. Yeah. But there's no guarantee. Yeah. You know, so you kind of are at the mercy. And That's, so, yeah. Whatever. Shout out Ghost Runner. I know, exactly. I was going to say, we're, we're kind of venting about this and maybe it's not that many people, but like the, the retention rate, like the, the, the average like view duration of something was really good for that woke parent video. So we know people are liking it. So it's it. like the people that are watching it are enjoying it. So therefore you would think that YouTube would say, YouTube, please show it to hey, more people. Hey, people like this. What well, am I going to show it to anybody? It's like, I don't understand. We're doing our part. What are we supposed to do differently? We're, we're making good yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah. It can be frustrating, but at the same time, just like we were in our negotiations with train everything, this is a long-term thing for us. Right. I'm going to try my best to not get bogged down by oh, it's so one video's performance on a Wednesday in December. Like this is a, <laughs> this is a five, 10, 20 year thing for us. Sure. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. You're right. And I, yeah, there's, there's the, there's the initial reactions and there's like the, okay, we can justify this. We can swing this. We can mm -hmm. spin this around for good. So it's going to be fine. Jakey. I'll tell you one thing that's not the problem and it's our wonderful ghost runners editors it's not i'll them. tell you that we got five different people working on this right now and it's fun and it's awesome and it's a ton of work right now because it's just a lot of onboarding these people you know but mm -hmm. it is it's great but they're like so good at everyone like listening will, to the art yeah yeah feedback the communication is great they'll always send like a video over like hey just tried this and it's like this is like 95 percent of this is already amazing yeah like, yeah totally everyone it, is very good and quick it's Qu quick. It's awesome. It's awesome. It we are really loving is. it. Yeah. I think the first day that somebody sent us or whatever it was, it was Thurbush and Ross. I think both sent their videos within like 10 minutes over. of each other. It and fun. it was like, I, I just texted Jake. I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. I was like, driving this down is to Arkansas. so cool. I was like, yeah. this is fun. Yeah. It's fun because they have their own little personalities to them. And so anyway, um, fun. Thank, thank, thank you to all those people. It's, it's been awesome. Um, One of our editors uh, Desmond, I was on the phone with him. He had some questions about something. Oh yeah. I want to hear about this. And he was like, I do, I got to tell you some stuff, uh, just unrelated. He was like, you know how you guys just reposted your, um, conservative dad at Christmas reel a couple of days ago. It's like, yeah. He's like the UPS guy that Brad said hi to in the video. Uh, he, he's like, he's only in there for like a split second. He's like, but I know, but I know that guy. And I was like, really? I was like, no you live way. in California. How do you know that guy? He's like, I stayed with him when I came to F12. What? <laughs> yeah. So that was nuts. And then he like, because go back and watch that video. You barely see that guy. Oh, yeah. It's half second. Barely see him. And it's blurry because the camera is moving. He recognized him and then he texted him and he's like, do you remember this? It would have been like a year ago. And the guy's like, yeah. And he's like, what's your route? And he's like, you know, whatever street. Uh -huh, yeah. And so that's his route. So I think that's our UPS guy. No So way. maybe we'll see him more. That's awesome. But he knows Desmond. Desmond stayed with him when he came to F12. What's the connection though? Um, I don't remember exactly. Gotta know the origin story, Jake. Yeah, sorry. It was a lot. This was like five days ago. <laughs> that is crazy. Like, and then Desmond was like, You want to know something else? And he's like, I heard you guys on the podcast a few weeks ago <clears throat> in the guillotine league mentioned that writer Burdett got knocked out. Writer with a Y. And he said, uh, that was like one of my childhood best friends. And we did not know that each other were listening to Ghost No Runners. way. <laughs> yeah. Like haven't hung out in a while. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like don't see each other now, but like grew up together. Had no idea. And then somehow they both found their way to listening to Ghost Runners to the point where they're both like big fans. You know, he came, Desmond came to have 12 writers in the guillotine league. I'm always He just shocked. hears that name and he's like, yo, that's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's awesome. That's so fun to like, yeah, those full circle. Well, and we were in Chick-fil-A yesterday and the guy taking our order. And that was the third thing Desmond said. I was like, dude, this is amazing. I was like, I'm just going to call you whenever you need somebody. He's like, well, actually, I actually already have something else for you now. I was like, what's the third <laughs> thing? And yeah, you could say it. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, I think is the guy's name. New his. 
sister. Is that right? It's something with in-laws, brothers, sisters, married. Somebody. Yeah, I think his sister married the, the brother-in-law's from California and knew Desmond or something from that. And so when Desmond and Lincoln, the brothers, came to Kansas City for F12, went to Chick-fil-A for the after party, Patrick was working at Chick-fil-A. Like, he's wait, like, I know you. He's like, dude, what are you doing here? So yeah. Desmond is basically, you get around Desmond, you're going to find some sort of wild coincidence. How fun. I couldn't remember, like just believe all three of those that were accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Be, especially because he's never, he's not from here at all. Yeah. He lives in California. Like, it's not like he has like, Oh, my family lives in Kansas like, City. I have roots. I see. Right. Like I was born there and I moved to California at a really young age. Like, no, nothing like that. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Maybe the UPS driver is Patrick's brother in law. I mean, maybe that yeah, would be fun. They probably are somehow related. I don't know. Maybe don't not know though either. with Desmond. He's got powers. So yeah, that was pretty fun. That's really fun. Um, this Friday, this past Friday, I did a little, they called it a Christmas bazaar. It's called a Christmas bazaar with two A's. Yeah. Like not like that's bizarre. Like it's a bazaar. Have you ever heard that as a noun? No, I think it's pretty popular in Europe. This is like when people use clutch as a noun and I'm like, no, that's a verb. (laughs) And it throws me off. Like, yeah, where's your clutch? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a holiday Christmas bazaar at McLean's. It was a little like, um, Got it. Friday night kind of whatever. It was just this market kind of thing inside, kind of like I did, you know, a couple months ago outside. I was selling cutting boards and this is my second year to do it. <clears throat> but last year when I did it, I was out of town. So I just hired Isaac. I was like, hey, can oh, we nice. go and do this? And he was like, yeah, it went well, blah, blah, blah. He didn't really give me too much information, but all the, you know, kind of emails that I had been getting for it this year. It was like, Hey, yeah, sounds, you know, this all looks great. Here's your thing. You're just going to have two little small, like tables from the, from the restaurant, like pushed together. That's going to be your, your booth or whatever. So I was like, okay, this thing's really low key. I don't have to bring that much stuff. Uh, I just, so I literally like was not stressed about it. I think I was, you know, we were filming earlier that day. I was like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I got, I got time. Um, I get there with my boxes of, like my cutting boards and I walk in and every other vendor there, there's probably only six people, six vendors total. The other five were acting like it was when like Santa's wonderland on their dark oh, tables. No. Dude. Like it was like, like fake snow. And like, you know, like they did like the cotton, like, like those, like, yeah, I know what you're talking the about. Felt like, yeah, white felt that looks like snow. White felt, or, yeah, looks like uh, gimbals in there, except for yours, dude, dude. Okay. And so I, w- I walk in and you know, like it was like, uh, we'll open an hour of hour. Yeah. It was an hour before it starts. Yeah. And I was like, great. Yeah, no problem. How long is it going to take for me to unload, you know, like 50 <laughs> cutting boards. And then all of a sudden I walk in and I'm like, Oh my God, you know, everyone, they had tablecloths on their stuff. They had somebody brought like their own like portable lights to like make it like a cool ambiance on theirs. Dang. And I had genuinely zero decorations. <laughs> like I had brought my business cards and that was it. And oh, so no, you were like the poor kid who like his parents didn't help him out on his like Valentine shoebox. A hundred percent. I was like, well, this isn't fair. No, I didn't know Dude. it was going to be like this. I'm, I'm not from around. Here. Right. <laughs> the Valentine is a great comparison. <laughs> yeah. And so I just, I just stayed straight, straight laced. And I was just like, you know, well, well I'm professional. Yeah. I don't need this rinky dink garland. Well, now is the other, you know, crappy thing is that the tables that I was putting it on were like the exact same color as like 90% of my co- cutting boards. <laughs> it so it didn't even up. like, yeah, it wasn't even like <laughs> popping out. Like it was like, and it was kind of a dimly lit place and all my cutting boards are like pretty dark brown, you know, <laughs> bummer. It was like, okay, this is going to be awesome. And so, so I walk out and I'm just thinking to myself, like, whatever, just walk out, just keep going, think in your head, maybe, you know, Peter and Sophie don't live that far away. I could maybe call Catherine and she could bring something. Mm-hmm. My sister was thinking about coming. So I was like, maybe I asked my sister to bring a few things. And as I'm walking out, um, outside, they have these two like standing flower pots. Okay. And in the flower pots were these like pretty tall, uh, Christmas trees. Okay. And then they have all these little ball ornaments underneath. Okay. Them. And I kind of eyed them and I thought to myself, I must, I must steal those ball ornaments. <laughs> I must steal those things and put Resourceful. them on. Resourceful. And so, you know, I, I pick up my next box. I walk in with it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of casing the joint at this point. I'm like, okay, is anybody watching me eyeing these ball yeah, ornaments? Totally. Could people see me getting the ball ornaments? And I put my, you know, put my next box down, turned around to go outside to get my next one. And I made the decision. I'm, I'm stealing these things. Fine. So, so I go and I pick up these ball ornaments thinking like, oh, this is going to be easy. I pick them up and they're like these, they're like made for outdoors. And so not only were they a ball, but they had like a, probably a 
18 inch stick (laughs) connected to them that are supposed to like go into this, you know, flower box, basically flower pot. And so didn't, didn't see that coming, but I just, I just took them and I didn't, I didn't even hesitate. Didn't look back. Like these are mine now. I took them and I took them back to my truck and I was like, I got to figure out how to get these stems off. (laughs) And so, and so I had like these, these three, I only got three of them, but I was like, I think this will be adequate. And luckily I had like these like pruning shear, like tiny little version of those in my truck toolbox. And so there I am, like I went and like parked around the corner. There I am like literally like, and it's like a metal. So that pruning shears are not supposed to cut this. And so I'm like, just, just gnawing at this thing, basically (laughs) trying to get this metal. You know how like you cut metal enough and then you can just kind of bend it off. Bend it. yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing that a few times. And I mean, by the time I got done cutting off the metal, I had manhandled these things. So they're not very <laughs> cute looking at all, but at least it was like a little pop of color. I, I go and set those up and then I have like 30 minutes still. So I was like, I'm going to go somewhere that has some kind of Christmas decoration and buy something. <laughs> so the only place I could think of was Westlake Ace Hardware. Okay. And yeah, ran over there. Everything was like $25. I'm like, I'm not going to spend that much money on a decoration. Found a poinsettia that was $6 and super droopy. Just... Literally, like as as we were like cleaning up, the uh, like the workers didn't even think it was mine. They just thought it was like a bad decoration. They just <laughs> threw it away for me. Um, but yeah, like so so there's my little table with my you know three or four different things on there. Little pop of color. No one no one said no one really complimented me. No one really bashed on me too much. Actually, uh, Greg and JJ came. Fun. Yeah, and yeah, if you remember roommate Greg, my bad, my bad. Um, he was there, and so. Uh, at the end, you know, JJ was like, J- no, their friend was there as well. And he was like, Hey man, like, uh, how much, like, I, I don't think I can afford one of your cutting. He's joking. Like, I don't, I can't afford one of your cutting boards, but maybe like, can I buy this decoration from you? And mm-hmm. I was like, dude, funny story about those decorations. Um, and anyway, just told him the whole story. And so I'm a thief. I'm a vandal. Um, McLean's, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. Did it work out in the end though? Like how much did you make? Yeah, money? I think, I mean, I made more than I would have made in Des Moines. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, yeah, I definitely, yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, that area of town. So, so it was at the Overland Park, Mark McLean's cool, which is like a little bit of a higher end, nicer area of town. And so there were plenty of people and I, I never know how to respond to this, but plenty of people were like, I mean, those are great prices. That is that is a really good price for that thing, because because my whole strategy behind do, doing these things is yeah I'll sell a cutting board for sixty bucks or something hoping that eventually you buy a table yeah that makes hoping sense. you'll eventually order a four thousand dollar table or something like that and <laughs> yeah so so I'm trying to just like talk to people basically mm-hmm. and they'd be like that's a great cool. price that's and so, for just half of one or? and so then like in my head I was like maybe I should raise the prices and I my, come to Overland Park yeah clients. well because I didn't have any prices on my on my table. Oh, oh, oh. And so they would just ask me and I'd be like, you know, that's 60, this is 40, that's 25. The big ones are a hundred, you know, whatever. And then by the end of the night, I was like, should I be like the, the big ones are 150. Big one. Let me put it this way. 12 point setters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll trade you. Yeah. Old school trading version. So, uh, anyway, but yeah, overall it was a set, successful night and, but yeah, didn't, didn't expect to have to decorate so much. So next year, I'll that is kind that. of funny. Yeah. It's I can't funny. think of an exact time in my life when that's happened, but I feel like I've been there before you show up somewhere you're like, Oh crap, this is not what I thought it was going to be scramble. Yeah. Like, like, like national kind of, history day or something. I feel like like <laughs> something is coming back to or me. Or just some kind of any kind of dress code when you're underdressed is a yeah. terrible feeling. Yeah. It's like, Oh man, here I go. Um, overdressed might also be a terrible feeling. I don't know if you're severely overdressed. Yeah. Like you're like in a ball gown. A gym and a tuxedo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was my crazy, crazy story of the week. Crazy story. <laughs> um, I went to Arkansas this past week, as I told you guys, uh, kind of last podcast episode. Went down to see the treehouse, went down to visit Miranda and Joey, listeners yeah. of the pod. They're awesome. Yeah. Everyone go go see Miranda and Joey. Don't even book my treehouse. Go book their treehouse. Just you know, go see them. How can you find them? Um, go to... Well, I know my, if you type in Airbnb or you just type into Google, like the name of my Airbnb, I named it the Peaceful Sanctuary. Oh, thoughts? It seems is a sanctuary never or always peaceful. You think it's redundant? I wonder. I'm, I'm wondering. I'm wondering. At this point, I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be a little redundant. Either way, love it, buddy. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll give you that. It probably is a little. But um, if you just type in Peaceful Sanctuary Treehouse, I'm pretty sure mine comes up. Yeah. And then from there, you can see, oh, Miranda's hosting this. Then you can click on hers and okay. see everything because there's like other pro- properties, yeah. other like listings on the property. 
anyway, they're awesome. They're just such a like power couple. Like Miranda's like a former like event planner, so organized, mm. business mind or whatever. Joey's former aerospace engineer. Wow. So can build anything, can do anything. Like built the entire like solar panel system in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas. Like did it himself. You know, like this That's guy's a really cool. go-getter. Yeah. It was just one of those guys is like, you're never going to think I'm smart, no matter how <laughs> much I try to prove it to you. One of those guys that you want as like a neighbor. Oh, you know, like I need him yeah. close by. Love just it. Just in case. Um, they were the ones the when I when I performed stand up comedy in San Diego, the yes. connection I had to San Diego was my friend Jordan and my friend Jordan and his wife like kind of mentored his wife specifically mentored Miranda because they used to live in San Diego. And so all of a sudden it's like, whoa, you know, Jordan, like, yeah, it's just crazy thing. So did they move from San Diego to middle of nowhere, Arkansas? Or did they have that is correct. along the way? No. Yeah. They used to live in San Diego. Wow. And they're just like. This is, We're this is our dream now. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just live out in the in the woods now and love it. It's just fun to be out there. They've got a like beautiful like lake pond thing around the trees. I didn't have any service, which I was surprised at how much I enjoyed that. I yeah. did. Uh, you know hey, what reminded me of? That's why we don't check our rating deal yeah. after we post videos. I thought of you a lot because that time you went to Austin, just left your phone at home. Mm -hmm. And you're like, the worst thing was I couldn't Google anything. And mm -hmm. that is exactly how I felt. It's like I didn't care about checking Instagram. I didn't need my text, but right. I was like, I'm just so curious. There's just times where it's like, I want to know the answer. Yeah. Just curious about different stuff. Or yeah. Whatever. It, like, like you're talking to Rachel about something. It's like, I don't know. You don't know either. Well, we can figure it out. Yeah. Like how cold of an environment can a house fly survive in? <laughs> I'm curious about that. You know, different stuff. But yeah, you're just out in this vibe and just like, there's just a couple dogs running around. Her kids are just out there. You know, yeah. like we said by her kids and they're just like barefoot. It's just like Huck Finn vibes, you know, right. like it was just awesome. So that is simple. So cool. And yeah, it was really fun. I, I have I I have such conflicting personalities. Like I think I like what you did, where it's like you can go have a peaceful sanctuary weekend, mm -hmm. but not like I don't know. Like I part of me would like love to live that way, mm -hmm. but another part of me is like I do like Google. I do like Chipotle. You know, I do <laughs> yeah. like being able to go to the store in five minutes if I forgot. You know, if totally. we ran a butter. Probably anyone who can truly live that way. Yeah, because. I, there's so much like the romantic like vision of it to me sounds awesome. Like just like that sounds wonderful. But then I'm like, okay, but I'm still a city boy at heart. I think, mm -hmm. you know, the, the resources are nice, but yeah, what we're looking for, Rachel kept saying this when he got, she's like, someone needs to write a book here. Cause you're just, you're, you're yeah. really up in the trees and you got these big windows and you're just looking out. It just feels yeah. just so cozy. Like this is where people go to like make albums and good <laughs> literature. Yeah. And so yeah. we're looking for someone who's going to be our first, uh, you know, person to book it and write a book in there. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. The book booker. Bon Iver. Have you heard of him? You know, that is like, yeah. uh, I think he had a album. One of his albums is into the woods. An album doesn't matter. He wrote an album one time where he just like, yeah, secluded himself for, you know. Months. Oh yeah. It's very common. I think I love yeah, it. Robert Frost vibes, but yeah. I mean, that was Kanye's thing for a while. Um, he would go to Wyoming and look where yeah, he's at right. now. And he's doing great. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's From what I understand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's one of the, I know about as much about Kanye as I do about FTX. So I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Everyone's really enjoying everything. Well, they're both doing really good right now. Right. That's why everyone's talking about them. That's yeah. Like, you these, always talk about the guys that are doing great. You guys kill on it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why a lot of people, when you see someone trending on Twitter, it's like people like kind of collectively are like, hey, can we just get, can some we just praise this guy for a second? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, let's acknowledge how good, consistently good he's been. Like everyone loves talking about good things. Like, you you know, you get on Twitter, you're going to see guys trending like Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. People are just like, man, this guy's awesome. Tom Hanks is Russell Crowe. Russell, he's trending. He's always a, trending. A lot. I've Always seen, trending. I, there was one time my grandpa was trending. Yes. Enough people were like, hey, he's been a great guy his mm -hmm. whole life. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Just grandparents in general. Yeah. yeah every day a different one's trending. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's what I love about the internet. And so shout out Kanye. And that's why I missed it for a weekend, you know, <laughs> when you're gone. Yeah. Um, one of the, my favorite conversations that I had with Joey and Miranda, and I'm excited to see what you think of this. Okay. Is, um, we were talking diets. I think we were talking about the no sugar thing, tick bite thing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joey and Miranda were like, we did a cleanse a while back. And like, have you ever heard of a colon cleanse? I was like, no, but I am intrigued. And so they said it's three days. Okay. Every morning you drink, I think just like a, a pretty decent sized glass of prune juice. Okay. So you start off with. Okay. And then the rest of the day is primarily water, basically. Yeah. You can occasionally have some apple juice, maybe you need a little sugar, a little like energy. Okay. But it's liquid. Next morning, wake up, same thing. Prune juice, water. Next morning, prune juice, water. And what happens um <laughs> is your colon gets cleansed <laughs> yeah it's like a fully cleansed i didn't i didn't expect this he was like because we were, we were eat, literally eating dinner right he's like just whatever i'm just gonna say it but like he's like you you would be shocked at what comes out of you he was like a lot of people 
Oh gosh. This is what he people, claims. People loved the, the kitten sack story a couple weeks ago. So. I know. I, I'm shocked at, that that like perturbed people as much as it did. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel yeah, like... Yeah. They heard colon cleanse and they fast forwarded already. So. Maybe. I yeah. don't know. As an adult, I'm like, <laughs> how much can really gross you out via audio? <laughs> audio can gross you out? I don't know. That, that All right, go ahead. Present, I don't know. Um, anyway, you said the average human has about seven pounds worth of just built up like feces like in their sludge. colon. It's kind of just like almost stuck. You didn't use the word stuck, engineer, but whatever. <laughs> it's like stuck to like the walls of your colon, basically. Mm-hmm. And it's just like piling up. Um like reverse erosion, basically. Okay. You notice over time, it's just building up in there. Yeah. And so you do this full colon cleanse. He's like, there's some stuff that comes out of you and it's literally black. Really? But I mean, it truly, it's fully cleansed. It all comes out. And so wow. Rachel and I, I'd say are in the curious phase. We think this sounds pretty fun. I mean, I'm always down for like anything like that. I just want to see one, yeah. what does come out. I would love to add black to the list of colors that have come out of me. <laughs> Second. You never poop black? Poop black? Oh, after uh, you were taking Pepto Bismol? No. Take it sometime, brother. <laughs> I think it's like some kind of charcoal thing or something. If you have charcoal, you Oh, well, just charcoal. Seriously, though, have you? No. There is. Like, charcoal's a thing. The charcoal toothbrush, toothpaste. But I think I'm not you can, eating charcoal. I think that you can ingest it. People don't ingest it? I don't know. I'm not. I think for like. Uh, it has actual benefits? Yeah, for like stomach stuff. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. Wild. But it, it'll Either get way. you. It'll get you there. And I'm curious about the weight loss thing. Like, is there really seven pounds inside of me? That'd be <laughs> awesome to just lose it. I mean, any the word cleanse is just a great word. Who, who doesn't want to be cleansed? Yeah. You know, of any, I'll, I'll do any kind of cleanse. Any kind of cleanse. It is fun. I don't know when, because Rachel and I talked, like, if we were going to do this, it would need to be a time where there's not much going on. Right? Yeah, you exactly. Know, because you just don't, like. Welcome to my life of dieting. It's always like, oh, I'll wait. I'll wait until, I'll wait until after Christmas. Well, that's different. That's just procrastination. That's because you want the cookie. Well, no, it's the social aspect of it, though. Of like, well, uh, like, I don't want to like go. Oh, I got a Christmas party. I don't want to just be the one standing there. Okay, you I know, see. While everyone's eating dinner, I'm just like, no, thank you. Yeah, we are coming up from like an energy standpoint. Like, I think we're going to be very depleted of energy for three days. That's so I don't think too. I can just do this in a normal week. And so we're like, maybe we could do it at Christmas break. But it's like when we're with her family. I mean, we are doing stuff primarily sports constantly. That doesn't feel like the right time to be just a weekend losing energy. Yeah, maybe it's a three-day weekend. Do it like Friday, you know, Friday afternoon to Monday afternoon. And just by Monday, you're probably somewhat used to it. I don't know. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, we're cleanse curious right now. <laughs> you're going to be like the Mr. Cleanse guy. Yeah, so so let us, anyone out there has any experience, or Joey Miranda, if you have any thoughts, I'm sure I didn't explain it perfect. Oh, yeah, I've heard of people doing cleanses all the time. Catherine's not a cleanse cleanser necessarily, but I think she's into that kind cleanse of stuff. Cleanse A? Yeah. So I'm sure she's cleanse curious as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's great we went to uh yeah a thing on saturday night called journey to judea you say judea or judea i would say judea thank you i did too but Catherine kept saying judea and she knows more about the bible than i do so i kind of went with her well um, the bible has pronunciation guides that's right yeah for americans specifically yeah, um, for english yeah so journey to judea um with some friends of ours and it was one of those things it's like one of those classic like church um church sponsored church organized things where you walk around outside to different like things where it's like reenactment of christmas story more or less have you ever been to one of those yeah um and this one was like the best one i've ever seen in my life like genuinely like it was um it was so good it was it it basically it wasn't just a christmas story it was like kind of walking you through different points different parts of the bible different bible stories and along the way you know like, but, but like, uh, oh crap. Now I can't even, I'm blanking. Judea <laughs> journey. But, but the, the time where they find the Ram stuck in the thicket, Isaac, got it. Isaac and Abraham. And, um, you know, like they literally had a Ram stuck, like a, a live Ram stuck Good. in the bushes and you didn't know it was coming. And all of a sudden they flashed a light on the Ram. It was like, holy crap. Very Joe wide of them. It was like, and then you like, like, I mean, there's probably 10, 12 stations total. And at every single station was like very good. Like, like we went through Bethlehem. I know what Bethlehem looks like now. I know exactly what it looks like. And it was <laughs> like, it was like a whole city in this, this like country. We, we put you on GeoGuessr, Bethlehem. You're like, yep. No, where this no is. No doubt in my mind, brother. Been here before. Well, if it was back then, I don't know about now. Ah, um, uh. I mean, it, it was amazing. Like the things that, and it was just so cool. You know, it was freezing cold. And so literally Catherine, you know, from Texas thought it was going to be an Arctic tundra. And so we, we bundled our kids in like five layers. Literally our kids have their snowsuits on and it was 
20 some degrees. It wasn't like terribly cold, but when you're outside for an hour, you know, but the kids did awesome. They loved it. You know, Hattie, especially like she's just so she consumes everything so well. She's like a sponge. And so like, you know, like Isaiah was, you know, giving this, uh, you know, what's the word he was, he was just talking. He, he was, he was doing a speech basically, <laughs> basically giving a speech from an unrecorded like, podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, but quoting something of his, from his scripture, from his chapter of the Bible and had he looked at Catherine, she's like, ah, we've, we've memorized this first. You know, oh, she's like, cool. so pumped about that. Or she's like, I know the story, you know, all these different things. And so Bo, I don't think knew what was really going on, but he got excited about the donkey. Knew what the sheep was. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, it was just a really, really cool thing. It's at, and I, I just want to tell, basically, I just want to inform anybody out there because you have to like make a reservation in advance. So I'm like, hey, if you're in Kansas City and you want to do it, go next year. It's called Countryside Christian Church Journey to Judea. And it was, it was really cool. I mean, it just, I think as, as you get older as a dad, you just get so much more emotional about like watching your kids start learning some of the things, you know, oh, that are sure. so important in their faith. And it's like, man, this, like, I, I bet Hattie's going to remember this forever, maybe, you know, for a long time going to this thing. Um, so anyway, it was really cool. And yeah, <laughs> they were all in their snowsuits and loving it. So that's um, pretty cool. I really like the idea of Bo just <clears throat> not having any clue what's going on. Just one night, my parents took me and I saw animals. <laughs> yeah. And then the next night we just stayed home. Right. I never know what's going to happen. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what, yeah. What if I wake up some days and I'm like, we're going to church. Okay. <laughs> and other days it's like, we're going to school. Okay. Some days I go to my aunt's house. Sometimes my dad just takes me to Chick-fil-A. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a way to live life. Just Seriously like, though. Like cool. he has no idea day by day what's going on. And I think dude, Bo is at a fun age right now where he's, I think he might be like genuinely, we're kind of worried about he, he might be hard of hearing. Did I tell you about this? Oh, I didn't know this. I don't know for sure. Maybe it's just a random coincidence, but like, after he was sick, like a month ago is when we started noticing this. He just like screaming all the time. Like he's just running around yelling. And I, I know that's not like, oh, so he's deaf. But it's like that along with like he has selective hearing or he doesn't hear us. Because sometimes we'll just be like, hey, Bo, Bo, Bo. And he just doesn't listen to us at all. And then one time <laughs> Hattie goes, what are you guys? Why are you guys doing that? Because sometimes we kind of whisper, like, Bo, Bo. Kind of, <laughs> and we're like, oh, we're not sure if he can hear us. And Hattie just looks at him and goes. She goes, oh, are you deaf? <laughs> <laughs> she but knows that we're deaf. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. She knows everything, dude. But like, I, I don't think he is. It's hard to tell, you know, whatever. But whatever he's doing, I mean, he's hilarious right now. You know, they were running around the house tonight and he had his cowboy hat on with his, you know, like stick horse in between his legs. And then uh, he stopped. He's like, Hattie, I want you to do it to me. I want you to run after me. And she's like, OK, I'm ready. And he's like, no, you have to go rah. <laughs> you know, like, and he's just coaching so cute. or directing yeah, yeah. her. And so, anyway, Bo's just, yeah, he's so fun and so funny. And he's starting to talk more and more in complete sentences. And so he's starting to really emulate Hattie and Catherine to an extent, but like, you know, emulate the things that they say or the way they say them. And it's That's always so fun. cute and so fun. So it's just like, it's a great age, you know, two going on three. Yeah, it's awesome. Kids are fun. If you don't have them, get them. The end. The end. end. Good. Um, should we call Scott? What do you think? Oh, there it is. I'd say so, baby. Oh, oh there he is. I there he him. is. There he is. Turn it up. Turn it up. Hey, what's up, Scott? Hey, turn me up in the headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, are you dying right now? Oh, bro, I'm I'm struggling, man. Today's been uh, today's been a long one. I remember uh, when we did uh, Schmores for most satisfying feelings. It was being able to breathe out of your nostrils and i truly cannot wait for that oh, feeling man i'm sorry Ooh, baby yeah that's all right <laughs> okay uh scott thanks for joining us uh i finally um got you all set up with a brand new microphone and then you didn't show up so thank you <laughs> called in sick what a flake uh, i told i told jake beforehand i was like you know you know scott's really sick if he's not coming like some people look for excuses you know, not yeah. to come like you you would look for any excuse to be here. So I'm no, I, I know you're really was, going through it. <laughs> I was really holding out hope uh, that the nasal spray was going to cure me, but I, I don't even know if any of it made it into my nostrils because <laughs> there's so much blockage. I feel like I, I sprayed it up there and it all just came leaking out. <laughs> yep. That'll happen. That'll do. That'll be, that'll be there. Been there. 
Yeah. Have you have you done my trick where you just you just force you just force yourself to breathe through the nose? I know it sounds crazy and easy, and sometimes uh, it sounds like you're gonna suffocate, <laughs> but you just do it long enough, it'll work. That sounds like what blowing your nose is. No, no, it's like the opposite. It's like breathing in. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So you want me to try right now? Yes. <laughs> no, you're, 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 you open your mouth. You open your mouth. You got to keep your mouth closed. <laughs> He's <laughs> dying. <laughs> no, no. It's like the whole point is like you cannot breathe through your mouth. You can only breathe, oh. breathe through your nose. Okay, here we go. It's like I'm suffocating. Yeah, I know. That's the point. It, it, it feels like that for a good. Sometimes it's thirty seconds or more. But I'm telling you, bro, just just do it long enough tonight. It, it'll help you. I promise. It's my it's my one. It, it doesn't cure you by any means, but it does help you breathe through your nose. <laughs> Would it help if I uh, stared in the mirror, Jake Triplett style? Yes. <laughs> You, you will. You will breathe through your mouth. <laughs> that is amazing how different your voice sounds with this cold. That's shocking. Yeah, it's uh, it's really reaching the, the lower levels of bass today. So <laughs> the bass. Sounds <laughs> my good. My sister called me and I answered the phone. She goes, "Oh my." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, okay yeah. well, uh, last week's s'mores, uh, I pulled out a win. It had been a while, but I got I got back to the free throw line and. Um, <laughs> Did pretty well. So, uh, congrats, man. Thank you. It's been several weeks. Um, this week's uh, Brad's Jake. choice. Thank Proud you, Scott. You. Brad's choice was athletes. Your Mount Rushmore of athletes. The order is going to go Scott, me, Brad. Okay. Ooh. Sheesh. No you pressure, Scott. <laughs> well, Scott gave me the no, first pick. So I got to give it back to him. This this is an easy, easy pick for me. Uh, I'm going to go with Michael Jordan. Yeah. MJ. Good pick. He was number uh, one. 23, 45, Chicago White Sox, all versions of MJ. <laughs> Birmingham. Best <Aaron>. athlete ever. <laughs> Space Jam. Aaron. Yeah, the Toon Squad. Space Jam, MJ. Wizards. Yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah, which, speaking of MJ, I was scrolling through the Facebook group on Sam's phone earlier, and uh, came with, I don't know if you guys saw it, but uh, somebody made a meme of, it was like George just kind of looking disappointed and it's just Scott when Palmer was born and then it shows a picture of him <laughs> cradling the trophy. Oh, yeah. It says Scott when he, when he wins the 5 0 pickle Walter. Yeah, that was Ross. <laughs> that was good. That was a great one. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was yeah. something else. So, and right. he's my number one, boys. Great pick. Uh, very good pick. Thank you. Um, no brainer. I'm probably going to have to go, I don't know. I feel like there's no order to any of my list, any of my list. Just like, I'm just going to pick one, whatever. I'm going to go Tiger Woods, mm, like equally dominant, yeah. equally as like culturally um, just important in what he did. Like no one was watching golf until Tiger Woods. Uh, if you've watched like the Tiger documentary, it's pretty amazing what he did for golf and how amazing people still hold him. Like he has had his fair share of off the off the course, what do you call it? Off the course issues. And people are still rooting for him more than anyone else. Like when he is playing in an event, people are like, I got to watch Tiger. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. He's not even that yeah. good anymore. And he's had all these issues. Like we know that he's not a good guy, but we can't stop watching him. Yeah, he's he was going to be my, I, I didn't think you were going to pick that. I don't know who you were going to pick, but I didn't think you were going to pick that. And so I was like, I'm going to pick Tiger because I think I'm going to get him before Jake does because Jake's a golf guy now. And then you went with him. No, that's, you're right. He's He made golf cool to us to our generation i think totally you know he had a whole like, video game oh sorry scott we're probably gonna be talking over it's so quiet with his new things we can't hear you very well but go on no 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 you're good you're tiger good. woods had i was a, just gonna oh. say he... <laughs> go 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 uh, i was just gonna echo what you said yeah absolutely revolutionized the sport and any tournament i mean when he uh, when he won the tour championship a few years ago, kind of like his first win since being like back, quote unquote. I don't know if you guys ever if you guys watched that scene. This was before you were into golf, Jake. But it literally was like it was a swarm of people, like as he was walking up to the 18 green, and it was it was just nuts. It was crazy. Oh, I remember in the documentary. I think eh, is that the one. Have you seen the documentary, Scott? I think that's in the documentary. Yeah, I think it is because I believe the documentary was made after because that was in 2018, I think. Yeah, that, that was the, yeah. the tour championship. It, it was literally like a wave of people behind him. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. OK, good pick. Um, gosh, I, I, I picked this category and then I was like, how do you how do you do this? You know, 
so many. I mean, obviously, there's no wrong. There's there's wrong answers, but there's no like. I don't know. There's so many like tears to this. Um, I think my first pick. <sighs> Go ahead. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking about it here. <laughs> I'm gonna pick LeBron James first. <laughs> oh wow! Wasn't yeah. even on my LeBron list. James. Wasn't even on your list. Correct. Wow. I think. I mean, in so many ways, I think he's. It, it depends on exactly what your you know the definition of you know Mount Rushmore of athletes is, but he is such a freak athlete and has won you know championships with what three different teams. Just amazing. I don't know. Um, just a freak of a guy. Just the fastest, the strongest, the tallest. Michael Jordan was like, just felt like the most like tangibly talented and clutch. But LeBron James is just the biggest freak of an athlete I've ever seen, I think. Did you say fastest, strongest, and tallest? Maybe not tallest, sorry. But he's taller than, <laughs> he's, he, he feels like he could play any position on the court more than anybody else I can think of. So I, that's why I think he might be, I, I love true. Kobe. Kobe's my favorite, but I think LeBron James might be like pound for pound the best basketball player. Um, so yeah, Jake, I did say tallest. I think he is the tallest. Uh, look it up, fact check that. <laughs> um, and then uh, my second pick. Um, gosh, I I want to do this. I'm gonna lose because of it. I don't even care. I'm gonna pick Patrick Levon Mahomes. Oh wow! I I and, <laughs> he was and on listen my to me, list, Brad. What's that? He was on my list. He was on my list, dude. That's not a compliment to me at all. <laughs> um, no, but but listen to me. I think this is a future pick. I think this is like, whoa, Brad, it's kind of ridiculous to say Patrick Mahomes is one of the best athletes. I genuinely think, and I'm I'm very, very serious about this, that he's the best quarterback of all time. I think he will be he will go down as the best quarterback of all time. I think obviously Tom Brady has the most accolades, but Patrick Mahomes will be better than him in every single category one day. I hope so. I, I am very convinced yeah. of it. I think I mean just the stats that he's the records that they always show for Patrick Mahomes already yeah. are just insane. Like you know, you know, Patrick Mahomes did this. The only other people to do this were Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. It took him 55 more games to do it or something crazy like that. It's like Patrick Mahomes is the man. And I just, I love him too much not to pick him. So I did it. I don't care. <laughs> he is. I'll give you that. Yeah. He is on pace to be probably the greatest ever. Yes. And I know that it, it's, it's not a, you can't guarantee it, you know, but it's one of those things where it's like, even like three years into his career, I think if he, in his career after three years, you could argue that he's a hall of famer. Like, I think he's what been five years now or something like that. He's done so much already. He's easily a Hall of Famer if his career ends right now, which is crazy. You disagree? Uh, I don't know how many players who only played five seasons made it to the Hall of Fame. Probably none, but Patrick Mahomes is special. <laughs> That's my point. He's the best. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I don't know. I yeah. mean, maybe. Um, okay. Brad, as much as I would love to be a contrarian to you right now, I, I see no fault in any of your arguments. <laughs> no holes. Yeah, I, I mean, like, it's so fun. Every broadcast, I feel like almost every, it's like every other game, every other Chiefs game, it's some new record he broke for the first, like, first this in their five seasons or whatever, or this, you know, 50 or 75 games. Yeah. And it's like people aren't even close to that. I mean, just look at his first full season where he threw 50 touchdowns or something like that. And, I mean, that was basically his rookie year. I, I mm -hmm. wish that he didn't play that one game his rookie year because then it would have been like everyone would have called him a rookie key. But like, if you just look at those highlights alone, that's like a career of highlights. Like the, the throws he's making that first year alone was just next level. So um, that's my pick, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you first sent over athletes, like this, Mount Rushmore athletes, the two athletes that came to mind were Michael Jordan and this guy, Michael Phelps. Yeah. Gotta sure. be. Yeah. I mean, like, put the country on his back. There yeah. was nothing like that feeling for several Olympics, but I feel like specifically 2008 when he, I think that was the year that he won every gold medal that he was in. He went eight for eight in That's gold medals. I was medals. about to ask. Did he ever lose? Like, I think felt that, like, like in relays and stuff, like they got some silvers and okay. everything and he might've got some individual like yeah. non golds at the end of his career, beginning of his career. But yeah, when he was at his, in his prime 2000, I'm in high school and just the whole family is just cheering on this guy. We don't, well, you know, you yeah. think about unless it's every four years, they <laughs> yeah. were just screaming at him to swim faster. You remember, oh, it was amazing. There was one specific race where it was like, there was a relay. It was the relay, yeah. And he came back and yeah, won right at the end. That was so amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, that was just fun. That was a fun era of Olympics of not getting spoiled because of social media in Tokyo mm -hmm. or anything, and just like we were so good at everything. So yeah, yeah Michael Phelps, good answer. Thanks. Can't, can't fault him. Scotty? Very good answer. Okay. 
my number two pick is uh, Serena Williams. Oh, man. Oh. I was saving her for my last pick. I didn't think anyone would pick her. Yeah. No, I think uh, she honestly, like, before I even really dove into thinking about this topic, like, it was Michael Jordan and, like, literally number two for me was Serena Williams because, and I don't know if that's a stretch in my mind because of what she did at the U.S. Open this year. But, yeah, it was like that was a good refresher for me of how insane her career was and just how dominant she was in the sport. And then also, if anyone hasn't watched the movie King Richard, I highly recommend oh, I watching watch that, that movie. Which, did Will Smith win the award for really, that? Really, I think he did. I'm just kidding. I, I think he, he did. did. This is the Oscars, right? That he slapped Chris Rock. What? Was that the, was that the night? Yeah, and then like 30 minutes later, he won oh, Best geez. Actor and went up there and made a speech. <laughs> and it was like, this is the most awkward thing yeah. I've ever seen. He was talking about his oh, forehand boy. in that speech, probably. <laughs> Yeah, Serena taught me yeah. my forehand. Um, but yeah, that was that movie was very insightful to their career. And we were talking earlier about like Tiger revolutionizing the sport. I think she did the same thing for mm-hmm. tennis, especially women's tennis. Yeah. Uh, Couple so quick yeah, fun go facts watch about King, go Serena. Watch King, Richard, oh, King Richard. No, you're good, Jake. Go sorry, we, it's so quiet. It's hard to hear. But um, one, do you know she won the 2017 Australian Open while pregnant? Wow, I did not know that. That's awesome. That's, That's crazy. one of the coolest yeah. things. <laughs> and then I want to say this is not quite as fun, just more like, oh, wow. Someone, I forget who it was. I think it was like some like Chinese businessman or something, like offered a bounty up for LeBron James and Serena Williams to have a kid together. Why do you think she chose LeBron James? She didn't choose LeBron James. <laughs> or why do you think he chose LeBron James? Why do you think he chose LeBron James? I was James? like, this didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, like, yeah, I'm excited to see the little guy. Like, out of all people, why would why would that guy choose LeBron James? Because of how tall he is. Because he's the tallest player. He's the tallest. Player. <laughs> and probably, like, if he didn't choose LeBron James, he probably would have chose Patrick Mahomes, right? Because <laughs> of how tall he is. <laughs> I do remember hearing about that. Like, that's next level. That's Chinese stuff, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> Just wild stuff. Good pick, Scotty. Oh, man. Thank you. They're all going to be good picks. Okay. My uh, my third pick is uh, Cassius Clay. Ah, also mm. known. As I was probably going to pick Muhammad him next too. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, uh, nicknamed the greatest. Uh, I don't really know much about boxing, but I sure as heck know who Muhammad Ali is. <laughs> <and was. laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, and there's obviously that that iconic picture. I feel like that is on every motivational poster ever. Of yeah. Is, is that after he beats? Who is it? Who does he be in that fight? Sonny Liston. Is that? Yeah, there you go. And he's got this, he's kind of yelling, and he's got his yeah. arm in a 90 degree angle, yeah. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. So you're just picking all pick. Will, Smith, Will Smith people, uh, Ali, yeah. King Richard. Yeah, Bagger mm-hmm. Vance is going to be my fourth pick, so. <laughs> you say Bagger Vance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good answer, Scotty boy. Thank you. Thank you. Jake. Dang, that, that was good. That was probably going to be my next pick. Um, okay, I'm going to choose Barry Bonds. Wow, okay. Which I know it was a... <laughs> that, that, is a that is a hot take. I, not, not necessarily a hot take. That is a controversial take because he's PED boy. Yeah. So is Phelps, though, isn't he? Did he? I mean, Phelps got in trouble for like... I don't think like, Phelps ever had any... What was he like saying? smoked he some... weed one time. Uh, weed's not a PED? No, I'm just kidding. Is that what it was? <laughs> I, I, that's the only thing I can oh, think okay. of. That's I right. Know. I remember he had some kind of controversy. Um, Barry Bonds, okay. But yeah, Barry Bonds. And yeah, he was in the era where a bunch of people did steroids and a bunch of people lied about it, and it's not the most likable thing. But we're not doing most likable athletes. <laughs> um, at least the way I saw it, it was like most dominant athletes, um, most iconic athletes. And yeah, think about you're on the mound and the game is on the line. Bases are loaded, two outs, whatever. Who is probably the last person you want to see at the plate? Mm. It is absolutely Barry Bonds. Yeah. I mean, he is shattered. So, Salvador Perez. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Although he is tall, and I know we're valuing tallness Tallest is good. (laughs) But yeah, Barry Bonds, I mean, some of the records, I don't know him off the top of my head, but that he set for, like, the amount of walks he had in, like, some of his prime seasons. Do you realize he got walked with the bases loaded, like, multiple times in the season? Yeah, it's like, we'd rather just get get one run than two or three or four. Like, the fact that they're, like, there's, there's more of a chance that he hits a home run here than, like... That just flies out or yeah. grounds out or whatever. Right. I mean, he was so good for those few years when he was really roiding up. And to be fair, he was really good before that. He was still on pace. to. He was like a silver slugger and golden glover before steroids. Yeah. 
Yeah, he just got huge. He's got <laughs> massive. Yeah, those <laughs> things work. <laughs> Put him in the hall. Yeah, so I mean, there yeah, was Barry, Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds had that water looking like a koi pond with people waiting for yeah, uh, yeah home really. run balls over the right field. McCovey Cove There's out there. Kayaks everywhere. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I just think he's probably the most dominant hitter we've we've ever seen, and he's a top four athlete for me. Top four. Okay. Um, did Barry Bonds play football and baseball or just football? <laughs> just baseball. Uh, my next pick is going to going. be. Um, who I named my son after? Not really. Dion Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my next pick is gonna be Bo Jackson. Um, just another one of those thirty for thirty documentaries. That if you watch, kind of like Tiger Woods, you know, it's just like you just love this guy so much, and it's like one of those like folklore things where it's like, yeah, I heard that Bo Jackson did this. I heard he, you know, beat the steam engine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's the John Henry. He's like a real life John Henry, basically. You know, people say all these have, have these all all these awesome, these awesome Bo Jackson stories. So um, he's another favorite of mine. I think he's just really cool. It, it would have been one of those interesting things, like you know, if he didn't, whatever it was, break his hip, basically, what could have come with him? Yeah, but he was such a freak athlete. So um, that is my third pick, and my fourth pick is going to be somebody kind of like Michael Phelps, where it was like I never remembered him ever losing anything in the Olympics. It's going to be Usain Bolt. I thought you were going to say Apollo Anton. I don't know for some reason. <laughs> I never, I mean, and it's going to be uh, Mark Hamilton, the uh, figure, <laughs> figure skater. No, uh, Usain Bolt, uh, just like, I mean, he's the greatest runner of all time. And it was one of those things where it's like, I want to watch him race, even though I know he's going to win. Like, I want to watch this because it's so amazing. Is he still the fastest man in the world? I think he's got to be, right? I don't think anyone's broke his records. Yeah, which would mean he is. So, yeah, I think... I don't, yeah, not much explanation there. It's just an amazing runner, got some swag to him, and he also, I think, commandeered a ship with Tom Hanks one time. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, Scott cried about it. That's yeah. She liked it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Scott still got it. He went snot. That's right. I will say, like. I, like I said, I have felt like death today. My head has been like throbbing the entire day. But like one of my main considerations in coming tonight was every time I laugh, I just like cough uncontrollably. <laughs> I was like, dude, if I go sit through two hours of a podcast, I'm going to be dead by the end of it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm going to cough myself to death. That's funny. Um, okay. My last pick is I think this could lose me the s'mores because it's not the most popular sport necessarily. But, but I, we'll, like, can I guess the sport? Look at the numbers. Okay. This guy is the most dominant. Let's see. Tennis? Incorrect. Um, oh, hockey. Bingo. Wayne Gretzky. They call him the great yeah. one. If you look into the numbers, are there, I don't know if there's been a player more dominant in their sport ever than Wayne Gretzky. I mean, maybe some right? sport you've never heard of. Like, yeah, you know the guy who won table tennis? Yeah, 20 years in a row. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe there's something like that. But as far as, like, the big four, big five, whatever you want to call it, like, it's crazy. Like, you know, Wayne Gretzky was uh, MVP eight seasons in a row. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, even like in Tiger Woods prime, was he the best golfer eight years in a row? No. I mean, we've never seen this. No, like major sports league has seen the <laughs> MVP eight years in a row. Mm. Like if you cut all of his goals in hockey, you get a point um, for a goal. You get a point for an assist. If you took all of his goals away, he would still be the leading scorer in points in NHL history. Oh, wow. I didn't know that stat about the assist thing. Yeah. So you get a half a point for an assist? Is that no, one point for an assist, one point oh, for a goal. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, if you took all of his goals away, I think he would still be 17th all time in points. You know, there's like all these just ridiculous stats out there with Wayne Gretzky. Cool. Just truly how dominant he was. Yeah. I don't think that's going to lose you the s'mores. I think that's a great answer. I mean... Oh, I put on paper. It's an answer. Oh, I don't know how the constituents are going to feel. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. Good. All right. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, he's the great one. Like, like when you think of hockey as a casual fan, we're not from Canada. You just think Wayne Gretzky. I know Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Mario Lemieux. Jerome Jagger. <laughs> yeah. Pronger. Chris Pronger. <laughs> what was that, uh, what was that uh, NHL hockey game yeah. on? Yeah, NHL hits. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> Mike Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when you would select the players. Did you see the the uh, what was it? The Atlanta Falcons. They did a like '90s themed uh, like 
throwback on last Sunday. And so they had like NFL blitz on their like jumbotron. I did so not it was see like, this. This week. The Pittsburgh Steelers are playing the Atlanta Falcons. And then they showed like the, the screen where it was like you could do all the cheat codes and put those in, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. It was like this 90s throwback day. You should check it out. So, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Anyway, NHL hits. That's how Mike I got there. Madonna. <laughs> anyway, okay, Scotty, last pick. Finish this out. Jake, let me show you how to make a fourth pick that loses you the vote. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. I can't Don't do it. <laughs> Let me show you. Whatever you're doing. It's got to be freaking pickleball. Yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, yeah, my, uh, you guys took all my other picks, and so I wasn't <laughs> going to put Ronaldo in my top four, but now my heart's just telling me to go with it because he's my guy. Uh, he's not exactly in his prime anymore. I will absolutely admit that. Okay. But when you look Neither at his is, career, you know, Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Barry Bonds. <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Uh, but when you look at his career and the stats of goals and assists and matches played uh, throughout his soccer career, he is definitely one of the all time greatest athletes mm. ever. Okay. More than Pele. That's, uh, that's Pele. Pele, it's Pele, you know. What about the Mbappe, bro? Mbappe is the next. He's the next generation. <laughs> he is the next gen. Um, I think Ronaldo has exceeded Pele in, in stats, but I don't know if he. Eh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say he's better than Pele because it's different generations. But just talk to Scott enough, and he'll just kind of back his answer. Oh yeah, I mean, I, maybe <laughs> Pele, actually it doesn't have to Pele's be. Pele's pretty good. <laughs> Oh, maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe I should go with Pe- uh, yeah. Pele's probably like more influential nope. too. Uh, I'm sticking with I'm sticking with Ronaldo. No, Ronaldo that's a good answer. Pele. Okay, so we got uh, Scotty said Michael Jordan, Serena Williams, Muhammad Ali, Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, Jake said Tiger Woods, Michael Phelps, Barry Bonds, Wayne Gretzky. I feel real good about that list. Do you? Um, and then Brad said LeBron James, Patrick Mahomes, Bo Jackson, Usain Bolt. Fun. Who would be like Each. if you had if you had four right now? You could only pick four. Who would you pick? Like only you, huh? Like you? It's not a draft. It's like, like just the top four. Oh, probably just uh, Michael Phelps, um, <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> oh, off the dome. Let Let's me think. See. Uh, probably throw Barry Bonds in there. You know, home run king. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, should we talk honorable mentions? Yeah, of course. Okay. Scott, you got any? Or did we take all yours? Uh, you guys took most of them. The, only other, the, the two that I left off were Tom Brady and Jack Nichols. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Tom Brady, I couldn't. I just didn't want to include him in the same breath as Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> so I, I left him out of that. And yeah, then, that's like uh, one of those, like, we just, we just like don't like Tom Brady because he's so good. I don't think any of us wanted to pick him. Yeah, exactly. It just hurts my soul too much. Uh, and then, yeah, Jack Nicholas. I don't think his uh, major title record is ever going to be broken by anybody. So I think he's probably the best golfer to ever live, although Tiger Woods has done more for the sport, I would say. Mm-hmm. The Golden Bear. Nice. Yep. You're big on nicknames. Indeed. That bear. The uh, bear. I had uh, Steph Curry. Thought about picking him. Oh, I don't know if that just yeah. recently, but as far as like game changing, like iconic type players, I like that he's starting to get in the conversation of like, hey, this guy's amazing. Like, I think for a while it was like, this guy's gimmicky, and it's like, mm-hmm. no, I think he's just amazing. Yeah, very talented, and also yeah, just shifting like the culture of basketball. Yes, he is like everyone shoots threes now. Everyone, mm-hmm. like, yeah, centers, yeah. LeBron James shoots threes. Hey, real quick, guys, have you seen the video of him making five full court shots in a row? Oh yes, thought it was real. It's not. Is it? Sorry, it's Turkey Trot. Fake, Sorry, right? Turkey Trot. That's <laughs> fake. <laughs> yeah. We should have gone. We should have let him. <laughs> yeah, I'm I surprised mean, that, you guys have uh, friends with that one. That guy is nuts. He did it again the next day, and he got six in a row. <laughs> <laughs> it was very impressive editing. But, yeah, I think they came out. They even posted how they did they it. They admitted that it was fake. Pretty cool. Okay. Um. So, yeah, I had Steph Curry. I had Mike Tyson. Oh, Dominant, fun. <laughs> this is my Tyson. <laughs> this is Tito. And then I guess the only one on my list that didn't get chosen, which I really wanted to pick, thought about, is Wilt Chamberlain. 
I picked Will Chamberlain. Or I picked Will Chamberlain on yeah, that too. also one of the most dominant. He averaged yeah. like 35 points in his career and 22 nine rebounds or something in his Insane. career. Insane. Yeah, he had a 50 inch and vertical he jump. 100, right? Seven feet tall, 50 inch vertical jump. I have a story about Will Chamberlain. Have you heard about the free throw story? Yeah, This American Life, that podcast. I think oh, I was the one who told you about it. No, I read an article. Oh, I heard it on This American Life podcast. Well, I've never read that article of This American Life podcast. You think they transcribed the podcast or <laughs> put in an article? Uh, yeah, it's crazy. You Great want to tell shot. everybody? Uh, the podcast I was listening to, it was the, the podcast itself was about like the threshold of like the social threshold. And so they talked to different topics, but one of them was Will Chamberlain. And, they t- and the, the point of it was like social embarrassment from shooting granny style. Oh, this is different than my stat. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basically, it's proven everyone, like, you can look at as much data as that's out there, and everything will tell you that it is more likely for a shot to go in when shot granny style. Yeah. But you look like a buffoon. Yeah. And so no one chooses to do it, unless your name is Rick, Rick Berry or Canyon Berry. Um, which I used to tell you on the podcast that I met one of his other sons, one of Rick Berry's sons one time. Uh-uh. He came to one of our show, and he was getting an Uber right next to us. <laughs> Fun fact. Nice. But um, anyway... I think I forget the details of the story, but maybe that game wasn't being televised or something. And so Wilt Chamberlain was like, all right, I'm going to shoot granny style tonight. He was consistently like less than 50% uh, percentage free throw shooter his entire career. And then that night shot like 70 or 80% the night he scored 100 points in a game. Oh, it was the same night. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That's what I remember oh, from wow. listening to a podcast like six years ago. <laughs> so some of that's going to be a little off, but for the most part, I think I got it. I vaguely remember talking about this, so I apologize if I already piggybacked this other fact on top of that fact. But... There's a, re- a rule in basketball now because of Wilt Chamberlain that you have to, you know how, how they have like the semicircle when you're shooting free throws? You have to stand in the semicircle. Wilt Chamberlain back in the day was so bad at shooting free throws, but he was such a freak athlete that he would go start at half court, run up, and just dunk the ball every single time for a free throw. <laughs> like he would, he would, he would like oh take off from behind the free throw there line. There wasn't a lane violation. There was no lane violation. And then so then K State's coach, Tex Winner is his name was like, hey, this is this should not be allowed. This is this he's is too tall. Yeah, he's he's too, he's a freak athlete. Like he really is. It's like it's not you can't do that. And so yeah, now the rule is like the the shooter you know has to be in this area. Yeah. Whatever. So I think that's just crazy. He was just like, whatever. I can't make the shot. I'll just jump and put it in there myself. That sounds nice. Isn't that wild? So, um, you have any more besides that? Nope. I put Kobe just. Yeah, whatever. Tom Brady, Wilt Chamberlain, and then I put Jerry Rice. I think yeah, Jerry Rice, his you know his stats. He's got some stats that are going to be unbroken. He caught like too. ninety-five passes after the age of forty. That's insane. He's just a freak. Barry Sanders, I think, is just one of those like what would have kind of like a Bo Bo Jackson, where it's like what would have happened if what he had just been. kept going. But he was like so shifty and fun. Like his highlights are so amazing. One of the only jerseys I had as a kid. Uh, and then this one, I kind of had to look back and like remind myself why he was such an athlete. But do you know who Jim Thorpe is? Yeah, Native American. He yeah. broke a lot of, like, barriers. But he was also an Olympian, mm-hmm. but also a professional basketball, baseball, and football player. I knew about football. Did not know about baseball Whoa. or basketball. Yeah, he was, like, a pro athlete. And, and obviously that was back then mm-hmm. when, you know, I could be a pro athlete probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just a freak of a guy. You know, like, anybody that does any, like, at least two sports, like Bo Jackson, you know, deserves to be on the list. Um, but then Jim Thorpe literally winning Olympic medals, you know, doing all these other things. Amazing. I was in a bookstore in Oklahoma city a few weeks ago when I went down there and I saw a Jim Thorpe book. And so I flipped it open and read a few things, but then the the book was like 800 pages. And I was like, geez, this is a lot about Jimbo. (laughs) Turns out it's probably each one of his sports. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. 200, you know, pages for each chapter or each uh, chapter of his life. Sport. Yeah. Each sport, each chapter of his life. I'm, I I feel good about chapter of his life. You think he's played basketball for a chapter and then moved on. He's like, all right, now I'm baseball time. Oh, yeah. Good point. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you did. I've got to read the book. Um, Scott, any final words? Um, get out. Those are my final words. Yeah, Scott's been texting me that he wants to get out baby. tonight. It's been very funny to hear Scott text me. <laughs> just out of nowhere, he'll just text me, dude. <laughs> no, nothing else. <laughs> two thumbs up, Scott? Uh, two thumbs up. Yeah, it was uh, Sam. <laughs> Excuse me. Sam took Palmer to gymnastics tonight, and so I was like, well, I've been meaning to watch this for a long time, so oh, I just yeah. was down here in the spot that I've been sitting the entire day uh, and watched it. And, yeah, like, the, the whole time, I just I knew it was like a, it was almost like a Top Gun feeling where I was like, you're only going to watch this once. Yes, dude. So just yes. embrace every moment mm, yeah. of not knowing what the heck is going on. And so I just kept texting Jim. I was like, this movie has, not been, has, has been out for a while, but I, I've not even, like, 
researched it, nothing. I just have heard it's a great movie. Oh. And I almost intentionally was like, I don't want to know anything about this movie. Yeah, it's and awesome. yeah, I watched it and dude, it's nuts. It's fun. It's two thumbs up, big time. And I think I lost my s'mores when I put that in my movies category. Just want to say. No, you won that week. Well, no, uh, Scott won that week. No? No. I don't remember. I've only won I twice won. and I remember both of them. So You won that week, Jake. Are we sure? No, but I would bet $100 on it right now. Whoa. So I feel good about it. Whoa. Wow. But I just like betting. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I'll I look it up. you won that one, Brad. No, I don't think I did because yeah. I picked Home Alone and everyone like hated on Home Alone. Uh-huh. I think it was Jake. Jake did Goodwill Hunting, Get Out. Oh, yep, yep. You're right. You're he did right. Captain Phillips, which is like, that's a bad pick. It was not. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I just want you to send me that like every day. In a, in a, <laughs> just, a, just an audio bite of that. Good thing I had to bet you $100. I did win that week. I just remember there being comments about like, Jake had me until Get Out. I specifically remember the comments. I was like, you just haven't seen it. It's so good. <laughs> Scott, I love that you watched it. Love that you were texting me. Let's Dude, hear, I want to hear all about your uh, MacGuffin story, but let's do it next week when we can like hear you better, get you in the studio, new mic, everything. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll give you the full McGuff. Yeah. <laughs> full McGuff beats. Scott and McGuff all, on the same court. All I'll court. say right now is, uh, yeah, he's he's awesome. Big McGuff fan. That's all I'll say Big for Big McGuff fan. All that he's cracked up to be. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys have cracked <laughs> him up. more. I uh. almost included him on my list today, but I figured... Uh... <laughs> Scott, t-shirt idea for you. You're welcome for this one. I'll 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 not take royalties. I'll just do it as a friend. Um, you know how they used to have McGruff houses back in the day? Oh, yes. And they had like the low, you know what I'm talking about, Jake? Maybe it's no. a, you know, bourbon thing. But like, it was like safe houses, basically. Like if you're ever getting run, you know, somebody's running after you, you see this like sign in a house, it means that you can go to that house to like seek shelter. Oh, interesting. McGruff was like this crime fighting dog. And so <laughs> I think you need to remake those, like that logo onto a shirt and it says McGuff house. This is McGruff's house oh, when yeah. he has a home game. McGuff. Uh, I like that. And they have like a picture of like a pickleball court in McGuff's house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I like it, Brad. Doesn't, look, doesn't recognize it. No, I don't oh, recognize yeah. that dog. That's McGruff funny. house is awesome. Maybe it's like a Kansas thing. I think like a national thing. Anyway. Would you say Kansas has a like, problem with people like having a, to run like away from no, no, I didn't. I didn't think so. I thought it was just like <laughs> a 90s thing of like stranger danger. It so. was only Kansas. We had this huge <laughs> problem of people just running away from predators and nowhere to go. So we like, to, I, I don't, yeah, I can, I can outrun them, but I don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plenty fast. Yeah. It was basically the it was basically the Airbnb of safe houses. Back <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Like McGuff came to your school and, you know, told you like, hey, be careful. Wow. When they when they when they say they have candy in their van, they're lying to you. You guys really had a problem. <laughs> well, we did it because we had a prevention. Thank you very much. Uh Scotty, thanks, man. Yeah, dude. Hope All you right, get feeling better. Boys. Yeah, bro. Praying Thank for you. Thank you, me too. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. See you, buddy. See you, fellas. See you. All right. I'm gonna turn take these off. Yeah, we gotta get a new audio mixer or something. That's too bad. Probably sounded normal for you guys, though. Hopefully it did. Hopefully. <clears throat> um, let's wrap this sucker up. Uh, I got a few more things on my list, but we'll see them for next week. Fun. Them for next week. Fun. Um, we got another ghosty sponsor in the pod next week, which would be fun. Stay tuned, you guys, heck yeah, for that. Heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. Uh, in the meantime, review of the week. I really wanted to read this one last week. Rachel, can you still hear me? She left. She either left. She's got the, the pods in or something. All right, well, this Rachel's going to love this one. Uh, this one's from Benjamin Holmes. He said... Uh, Ever met uh, diehard you and I volleyball fans? Well, I just did. Actually, I've known them for a while because they're my grandparents. So I'm sitting here on their <laughs> couch here in Waverly, Iowa, uh, which is very close to where Rachel's from, and they live about 20 minutes from you and I. So I ask, hey, do y'all know, do y'all follow you and I volleyball much? Immediately, Grandpa snaps. Absolutely. They just won the Missouri Valley Conference cha- Tournament <laughs> Championship today. Absolutely. I just about die laughing. So I proceeded to then ask, do you remember by the... Pl- a player by the name of Rachel Coop, Grandpa uh, looks at me like I just asked a really dumb question. <laughs> Ever it's, heard of LeBron James? <laughs> it says, "Well, yeah, definitely." <laughs> it starts rattling off her hometown high school stats. Oh, I heard just heard Rachel coming. Rachel, this review is about you. Okay, that's not Rachel. This is a McGruff house. Someone's yeah. seeking. <laughs> Someone's coming in here. Hello. Oh, she does have AirPods in. Good for her. No she's, she's dialed in right now. Okay. Um, 
hometown high school stats, other just random fun facts that had me just about bursting out laughing. He then proceeds to ask me why I ask, to which I casually say, oh, just a friend of a friend. Didn't want to take the time to explain it to my 80-year-old grandparents. Anyway, Jake, just know you're marrying someone my grandparents seem to think very highly of and have definitely never actually met. Go Panthies. Panthies. That's yeah. like a real thing that people call them. I guess so. Yeah, Rachel put that on her story and everyone just replied. It looks like panties. <laughs> yes. Whoops. It is one letter different. You are right. <laughs> uh, that's so crazy. Like, yeah, I, I, I kind of know somebody that is really connected to her. <laughs> <laughs> Really connected. <laughs> my uh, grandpa-in-law, if you will, Catherine's grandpa, mm-hmm. at Thanksgiving asked me how my talk show was going again. How your talk show? Yeah, was? it's just it's just hard to like explain. You know, it's good. Yeah, how's your radio? We're show? talking. We're talking a lot. How's your morning show? <laughs> hey, maybe someday. Uh, love this podcast. This is coming from Grace Widowit Widowilt. Why do Why do Wilt? We do Wilt. Wahida Wilt. W i e d u w i l t. Five stars. Uh, hey boys, said like Scott Peck, long time listener, first time reviewer. I have to say this podcast is not bad. I love it more than Scott loves Top Gun, if that's even possible. I found this podcast from Trey Kennedy's Correct Opinions. Jake's my favorite part of that podcast, so I knew I needed to check this one out. Little did I know that I would find not only an amazingly funny podcast, but also an incredible community. The love and friendship between ghosties is remarkable, and I love that I can be a part of it. I love all the stories and inside jokes from just drinks and Amish jams, pickleball, Isaac's dog kennels and the Branson and all the Branson references. Uh, she says from St. Louis, no problem. Uh, <laughs> so every Monday morning, get on your feet and listen to the ghost Runners podcast. I promise you won't regret it. Bye. Bye. Thank you to grace. That's fun. Um, yeah. I love the part about the community. If you want to be more part of a community, come with us in April to Florida. Get I dare queen. you. Get yourself a queen bed. Get yourself one of them queen bags. Yeah, get yourself a private chef. I Sunset did, catamaran cruise. <laughs> Hot dog. Optional golf pickleball with Jay. Hot dog. Hot dogs on the beach with Brad. Which, by the way, I kind of I want to go play golf too. Okay, no, you totally can. Yeah, it was just that one comment. I let people know. <laughs> I was listening way. last week, and I was like, I'm not gonna be like a bump on a log. I want to still do stuff. Cool. Yeah. So I would like to play pickleball and play top golf or golf as well cool gosh i can't wait for florida it's gonna be awesome it's looking like i was on the phone with joe earlier when i was at hy and i might be in F- florida three of the four weekends in january joe your oh sorry manager joe yes thank you and i was like rachel is that like okay and she was like you you need to be spending most of your january in a warm climate she's like please <laughs> go to florida that many times yeah so why yeah why not and then a weekend in april as well it's gonna be awesome gonna be zoppity i was about to say that too Cool. Brad, do you want to end this episode with a copyright free jingle? <laughs> yes. If it ends uh, up not being copyright free, then this next uh, three, two minutes are going to be just mute on YouTube. So sorry about that, because we need to make our thirty five dollars from this. OK, <laughs> it's very important to us. Gene Schwartz is tanking. Okay. I, <laughs> we need everything. We need everything. YouTube is yeah against us right now. I want to sing some and then I want you to rap some with me. Cool. This okay. is going to be a freestyle. We have nothing planned. Genuinely. And we got nothing. I, I typed in. I forgot what song you're even playing. It's uh, Deck the Halls by the Jingle Punks. That's right. Jingle Punks. <laughs> I remember the Jingle Punks part. All right. Um, this might be really loud at first. It may not be. We're going to turn it down and work our way up. Okay. Yeah. Jingle Punks. Oh, I can't hear myself very well. That's okay, though. I'll turn it down, I'll turn it down. You know we love all you ghosties. Fa la 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 every Monday morning. And we love that you come and sing with us on the Ghost Runners podcast every Monday morning with Jake and Brad. <laughs> you wanna go? Oh, sorry, right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah! Come to Florida, brooms, they be selling. And when I'm rapping, you know I'm jingle bellin'. Mmm. Yeah, Sharon is Karen. But what's better than that? A little Christmas Carolyn. <laughs> oh! Hey! Slay, slay, slay rhyme, slay rhyme, slay rhyme. Slay rhyme. Slay rhyme. Yes, rapping about Christmas, oh, it's the best pun. And I'm doing all this in a turtleneck. Jingle bells, jingle bells, goodwill tidings. What rhymes with tidings? 
Writings. Writings. Hidings. Lightings. Uh, flying in my kitings. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Brad. <laughs> I don't do this very much anymore. And we know that we really appreciate you every Monday morning with Jake and Brad. I like the bouncy little... Da -da 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 -da. Oh, key change. And we know that you are always going to listen to us eat been when Gene George tanks. We are going to try <laughs> really hard to make some funny videos on there, so please watch our videos. And we know that you will always support us with a subscribe and a comment that would really <laughs> make our day. So we really appreciate you. Go panties. These. Oh, it's still going. Ah! So. Oh, well, that was gonna go. I like that you didn't worry about rhyming. I should have done that. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never. That was great. Sorry, that was a disappointing performance for me, but I don't really practice that skill ever, so <laughs> not very good at it. Um, anyway, thank you guys for listening to this podcast. I hope the audio was as it normally is. Feels a little weird, end, but all good. It's all good, baby. Um, Jake, have a good time in Iowa. Yes, can't wait to tell you guys all about it next week. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for um, being supportive with everything that you do in the Facebook group, the comments, the likes, the views, everything that you do for us. Really appreciate it. What's it going to take for you to wear that turtleneck on stage? Oh, wow. I don't know. I had thought about that. I guess when I go, it's 11 p.m. right now. I'll go home and pack. Maybe I'll just throw this in the bag. We have we have one more Jean Shorts video to that comes out before your some of your performances. If it hits 150,000 views. That's, I mean, that's like oh. unheard of right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's plenty. Okay. Would you wear it backwards? Backwards? <laughs> Why is that? Why do you need that? Not just wearing it. <laughs> because for 150,000 votes, views. Votes? Um, no, I think, I don't think I'm going to wear this backwards. I just stage. don't know. Like the, the turtleneck. I don't know if it's, you could even tell it's backwards. Uh, uh yeah. I don't know. I Jake's, think I'll probably just wear a turtleneck backwards to the podcast next week and see if you can tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, use an AI to write us YouTube comments and Facebook posts. Please. See if we can determine yes. um, if it's artificial intelligence or not. Um, and with that, I don't know. Have a good week. Have a great week. Love ha you guys. Have a good week. Check out our trip. Come on the trip with us. Come on the trip. Come on the trip. Come on the trip.